Welcome to Spirit Filled Channel. If you have not yet subscribed, please click on the subscribe button and like the video. Thank you. excited to be in the presence of the Lord you'll give the Lord a shout of praise hallelujah come on give the Lord a shout of praise do we have excited people in the house give him a shout can I get a shout of victory hallelujah the psalmist said I was, I was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the Lord and yet the Bible says, for with joy, we will draw from the wells of salvation. So that means um, every single redemptive realities that have been made available unto us, the saints, through the death, burial, and resurrection of the Christ can be accessed by engaging the secret of joy. Hallelujah. And the joy that I talk about is not just some kind of excitement or happiness, praise the Lord, but joy inspired by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. 
The Bible says in Romans chapter 14 and verse 17, it says the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and what? Joy in the Holy Ghost. One more time, if you are excited to be in the presence of the Lord, if you are excited to access divine health tonight from your redemptive reality, you are excited to access power, you are excited to access grace, to access wisdom, to access knowledge, to access divine direction. It says fall with joy, fall with joy, for not happiness, joy and excitement inspired by the Spirit of God, by the Spirit of God. That means in the midst of that pain you will rejoice, in the midst of that hardship you will rejoice. It says all things will get together for good. may not be permitted in the presence of God but childlikeness is permitted hallelujah Jesus looked at the disciples and he says for such is the kingdom of God hallelujah amen so we're going to give that shout one more time I don't know how excited you are for such is the kingdom of God he says do not forbid the little ones from coming to me he says for how you access the kingdom is to become childlike I know we are organized people but just for a second just for a second my daddy my daddy your baby is singing I'll be singing and dancing and shouting for the rest of eternity my daddy, my daddy, your children are singing. I'll be singing and dancing and shouting for the rest of eternity. Only you, only you, only you, only you, only you. Only you. of the Lord. I'm super, 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 super excited. Hallelujah. Because I know today, today doors are about to be open. Tonight, doors are about to be open. For the Bible says, and all doors open. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. One of the courtesies. Amen of joy in the house praise the name of the Lord praise the name of the Lord one of the courtesies of accessing divine presence is to come with a divine expectation it becomes a waste of time to appear before a king and not have anything to say not bring before him a petition it becomes a waste of time on his own part and on our own part praise the Lord the Bible says therefore we should come boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain grace and find help in the time of need praise the Lord so one of the courtesies of accessing divine presence is to come with a divine expectation you have one minute to bring that expectation before his majesty tonight I don't know what that expectation is tonight but you have one minute you have one minute. 
Is it that pain? Is it that depression? Is it that infirmity? Is it that area of ignorance? Go ahead and build your expectation before your king tonight. The Bible says, For the expectations of the righteous shall not be cut short. Lord, we appear before you hungry tonight. We're ready and set to receive every single thing you have in store for us tonight. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Just one scripture before I leave our faces. Second Peter chapter 1 and verses 2 and 3. Second Peter. It says, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Verse 3. It says, According as his divine power hath given us. That means it's a reality that has been settled. It's a past experience. Amen. According as his divine power, it says, had given us all things that pertains unto life and godliness, but only access through knowledge, the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and virtue. Praise the Lord. You may have heard time and time again being taught very profoundly by our Father and the Lord in this house that divine life is knowledge activated. Divine life is knowledge accessed. Praise the Lord. When we profess Jesus Christ as our Lord and personal Savior, there was an exchange of our life for his own life. Praise the Lord. And when this life came into us, it came with several possibilities. Praise the Lord. So the Bible says in verses 3, it says, According as his divine power had given us all things, but only access through knowledge. Praise the Lord. That means divine health is accessed through knowledge. Lifting is accessed through knowledge. Greatness is accessed through knowledge. Praise the Lord. So that means for tonight's service, every of the bounties from everyone who are... You're welcome to God's house. Praise the Lord. Scattered all over these premises, inside and outside are people who have come from different parts of the world, within the country and outside of this country. They have come before the Lord tonight seeking different kind of things for some of us encounters, for some of us divine direction, for some people healing, for some people breakthroughs, for some people restoration, whatever it is that has brought you here tonight. For some, it is to get this true intimacy, this fellowship and intimacy partnership with a person of the Holy Spirit and this is what we represent in this ministry um, we hope to bring you to the point of intimacy partnership and fellowship with the person of the Holy Spirit and this and can to what we represent in koinonia hallelujah we believe that Jesus can be revealed and glorified in the life of a believer also and this is why we acknowledge him in everything that we do down right from the start of the service from the prayers every function tonight has been dedicated for you to experience this intimacy and partnership with the holy spirit praise the lord hallelujah so in one minute i want us to acknowledge jesus we have come we have already established the fact that we have come for various kinds types of reasons diverse reasons has brought us here tonight so just acknowledge him that he is the only one that can satisfy you tonight. Pray. I want you to acknowledge him. In your words, you are the only one I've come to see tonight. Not a man. Not my neighbor. The only person I acknowledge that is able to satisfy me is Jesus, the Holy Spirit. The person of the Holy Spirit tonight. Jesus revealed and Jesus glorified in my life tonight. I acknowledge you, Jesus. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Praise the Lord. There are a set of special people amidst us here tonight. They are the first timers and I have the privilege to welcome them. If it is your very first time here on this grounds, international visitors, if you have come from within this country, wherever you are, 
we want you to rise to your feet as we welcome you specially. Can you please rise to your feet as we give you a joyous celebration? Welcome. Wherever you have come from, please rise to your feet inside or outside. We celebrate you. We love you. You're welcome. Welcome to God's house. Welcome to Koinonia on behalf of Apostle. And of course, Jesus, the angel over this commission, I have the privilege to welcome you to Koinonia, a place of intimacy and partnership with the Holy Spirit, a place where we truly encounter God, a place of transformation. Hallelujah. You're welcome to the city of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Quickly, a team of PR officials will be putting into your hands a card that looks like this. It contains, it's a watch cue to detach it and pass it to the worker standing beside you, either the usher or the PR official standing right beside you, and they will take it from you. Praise the Lord. During the course of the set, forward it to your friends, your families, your relatives, your loved ones via text, whatever it is, WhatsApp groups, just ensure that someone is following here tonight, and the Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus. Whilst the first time as a standing, let's stretch for our for our hands and pray for them that is a culture in this house we pray for them from the depths of your heart in the name of jesus we pray that the blessings of this house rest upon them every covenant that is upon this ministry we pray that is being activated for them in the name of jesus that that which they've come to seek tonight they will receive many folds in geometric supernatural progressions in the name of Jesus. Can we celebrate them as they have their seats? God bless you. Welcome to Koinonia. Hallelujah. Raised, has come to worship now can we just take one minute and acknowledge all that he has been all that he remains and all that you have come to know him to be call him helper call him teacher call him father acknowledge his goodness in your life someone needs to remember that he is your protector my provider, my sustainer. I've come to worship you. One scripture very, very quickly. Let's take a look at Psalm 18 and verse 29. Psalm 18 and verse 29, very quickly, before we take the testimonies very simple scripture it says for by thee I have run through a troop and by my God have I leaped over a wall this sounds like a testimony of someone here now listen it didn't just say I have run through a troop and I have leaped over a wall he is careful to explain how this has come to be that if you see me run through a troop it is not because of the speed upon my legs 
it is not because of the years of experience and training if you see me leap over a wall it's not because of my own strength the Bible says it's not by power is not by might but by my spirit says the Lord so he says for by thee acknowledging that everything worth acknowledging everything that is worth praising about my life it is for by thee I have run through a troop and by my God I have leaped over a wall this is the essence of sharing testimonies here in koinonia every testimony is to acknowledge the force behind the possibilities that we experience we acknowledge that god is the doer of every great work hallelujah does someone have a testimony here this evening is are there people who have experienced the bible says let the redeemed of the lord say so are there redeemed people here are there grateful people here have you experienced the favor of God? Have you experienced the protection, the covering of the Father? Can you shout to the Lord a shout of praise, acknowledging His faithfulness? Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Very quickly, we'll be taking testimonies of what the Lord is doing in and through this ministry around the world, even through the grace upon our Father, please make welcome the following people as they come to share with us here physically. Um, make welcome P.E. Amadin Obarogede. P.E. Amadin Obarogede. And then welcome Joy Effiong. Joy Effiong. And finally Rose Eze. Rose Eze. Hallelujah. Now, very quickly, I have testimonies I'm going to read um, of what the Lord is doing around the world. We have testimonies pouring in every week um, through the faithfulness of God. This is from Great, Great is here in Abuja. I joined Koinonia in March 2022. In July 2022, I testified of how I listened to the message, This Grace Called Favor, and got an extension of my internship by carrying out Apostle Joshua Selman's instructions. Specifically, I honored my boss as Apostle taught in one of his messages, and he, my boss, told me he had wanted to join the company as a full staff. He had wanted me, forgive me, to join the company as a full-time staff when I graduate. On September the 1st of 2022, even whilst I was yet to graduate, I was promoted to a full-time staff. Can someone shout hallelujah? Shockingly, I started earning twice the company's copper salary, even before I wrote my final exams. Can someone celebrate the faithfulness of God? Now, Great continues to say, Koinonia has been, has been a blessing to my life, and I've got other numerous testimonies. On August the 1st, 2022, few hours after July Miracle Service, I received my first ever scholarship. After waiting and not getting it in my first, second, and third university year, in October 2022, I emerged the overall winner of an essay competition for West Africa students. Can we celebrate Jesus for this testimony? Finally, Great says, in November, I won an education fund for final year students. In the same November, I received a huge research grant for my final year thesis. I am very grateful to God for all these testimonies and opportunities. All these testimonies were consistently my miracle services, prayer requests. Indeed, God has a covenant of answered prayers in Koinonia. Can you shout a big hallelujah? Hallelujah. Now, this is from Mrs. A in Cyprus. I write to thank God for two spectacular miracles he has done in my life. Firstly, God blessed my family with a car on Monday evening. Since we sold our car early last year due to financial issues, I've been believing God for another one. Can someone shout hallelujah? I believe someone who is trusting God for a car will shout a bigger hallelujah. <laughs> Mrs. A says, knowing that my family's finances couldn't get me a car, I left it to God to get me one. He put it in the mind of someone, and this person made the first installment for a car for me. Got me an easy installment payment plan 
for the balance and have the car delivered to my address on Monday, just after miracle service. My request for a car has consistently been the first item on my prayer request every miracle service. Glory to God. Have you noticed how God is answering prayer requests from the miracle service? Can you shout hallelujah? hallelujah. Secondly, Mrs. A says, my son walked on his, his own Oh, my son walked on his own on the 1st of February. He is 14 months old and had been afraid of taking his first steps, which had gotten me so worried. I had it on my prayer request list at the January Miracle Service, and God answered me. Strength has come and the fear is gone. Can someone shout hallelujah? A baby of 14 months old just began to walk miraculously. Hallelujah. This is from Uriel in Lagos. I had been listening to Koinonia services and messages by Apostle Joshua Salman via YouTube rebroadcasts for over six months now. I usually skip miracle services and intentionally too, assuming what I needed the most were the teachings. I decided to start following the live services online and since the beginning of the year 2023, I attended the first service of the year via live streaming and heard when Apostle announced that the next service was going to be a miracle service. I initially wanted to disregard the announcement, but I decided to connect live on the said day, just to see how Koinonia miracle services are like. The moment Apostle declared a word on regurgitating, I perceived at that very moment to open my heart to receive my healing. I am 30 years old and I've been regurgitating food after every meal since my childhood. After the miracle service, I ate noodles, no regurgitation. The following day, I ate and didn't regurgitate at all. As I write, I haven't regurgitated any meal since then. God has indeed healed me. Can someone shout a big hallelujah? Hallelujah. God is indeed true to his word. Now, this is from Mr. and Mrs. O, all the way from Canada. In 2021, my husband and I encountered this great commission and we keyed into every teaching and prophecy made. We sowed a monthly seed in faith and live streamed Koinonia services every Sunday. Amidst taking these steps of faith, my husband and I connected our prayer requests of having children to every action we took, as we had been believing God for the fruit of the womb since our wedding in 2019. I listened to one of Apostle Joshua Salman's messages, which I engaged desperately during my time of retreat. And the scripture was impressed in my heart from the book of Mark, chapter 12 and 11, which says, this is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. I shared this scripture, the Holy Spirit laid in my heart with my husband and he began and we began to pray with it every day declaring that our testimony will come forth during the last miracle service in 2022 apostle joshua salman called out couples waiting on god for children to pray for them in faith we stood in front of our television screen declaring this scripture and screaming the loudest amen to the prayers and prophecies apostle made and when it was time to submit our prayer request list, we wrote down the date we wanted the scripture passage fulfilled as January 2023. That was the date we wanted our testimony. And on 31st of January, I was confirmed by the doctor as five weeks and two days pregnant. Someone shout hallelujah. As I write this testimony, I am still in awe of this God. It still feels like a dream, and I have returned like that one leper to give unending praise to the God of this great commission, the God of Apostle Joshua Salman, who finally heard our heart cry. Can we just celebrate Jesus with a shout and a clap of praise? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is meeting the needs of not just individuals, but of families as well. Hallelujah. And your family shall return with a mighty testimony in Jesus' name. Amen. This is from Gochuku S. I was privileged to meet Apostle Joshua Salman before my UK study trip. 
I'll not forget how Apostle readjusted his, seat, his seating position and said, now let me bless you and pray for you from the depth of my heart. He declared that a full scholarship was waiting for me already, as well as many other blessings. I wrote these down. To my utmost surprise, Apostle gave me foreign currency as a gift, and that was when I knew that my name will be favor in the UK. I got into the UK and was made the program's representative in both the hospital and school, including the school press interview audience. Then a Nigerian who, some, whom someone directed me to, to help me book a hotel on arrival, ended up accommodating me in a very comfortable two-bedroom apartment for three months. Can we celebrate Jesus? This is favor. He insisted that I must not use any of my supplies, nor food, as long as I am under his roof. A month later, the school sent me a reminder that I had a month to start paying my tuition balance. I was disturbed because the balance was in seven digits, and I still owed my sponsor and someone from church who lent me money to show as proof of funds before my visa approval. I paid the loans back while facing the pressure of my tuition balance. I thanked the first person and refunded the 1.5 million Naira borrowed. I asked my sponsor for his account number and the family asked how much I was returning. I answered and they further asked how much I needed to balance my tuition. I told them and the next thing I heard was, use it to clear your fees so you can focus. Can someone shout hallelujah? It says, this God, in the organization I worked part-time, my shifts always fell on school days. I kept holding on to the word from God's servant, and on the last service of the year, I took it personally and fasted for days. I remembered I hid the money apostle gave me, so I brought it out and prayed profusely, citing that Paul's handkerchief healed the sick, therefore apostle's money would pave the way for more kingdom wealth to come through a job, declaring that I will not end 2022 without a job. I planned my end of year retreat as apostle instructed and mapped out the last three days of the year for it. On the retreat's first day, I had an interview over the phone. The second day, being December 30th, I got the job plus another job clearance from an agency I had been following up on. Can someone celebrate Jesus? Come on, are we getting too familiar with the faithfulness of God? Hallelujah, supernatural job. Hallelujah. It says, it was like magic. Two new jobs were confirmed on the 30th of December. I give all glory, majesty, and adoration to God Almighty. Can we celebrate this God that answers prayers? Hallelujah. Now, the last testimony I have before me um, is from Amenzi in the UK. I write to thank God who is too faithful to fail for confirming the words of his servant, Apostle Joshua Selman. God's servant made a declaration during the January Miracle Service saying, and I quote, the kind of favor you have never experienced in your life, you will receive it this week. And I received that word and kept declaring it. Can someone say an amen to that declaration? Amen. Let me read it one more time. The kind of favor you have never experienced in your life, this week you will receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He says, I'm a student studying applied data science in the United Kingdom. Some time last year, I applied for a scholarship, and the names of the shortlisted candidates were released on August 1st, 2022, and they were contacted. Thereafter, I completely forgot about it because I wasn't contacted, and the scholarship program was to kick off for a September session. On Friday, the 3rd of February, 2023, approximately a year after, I got a mail from my school requesting for my bank details and an acceptance letter 
that I have been awarded a 10,000 pound scholarship. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. It says the mail stated that they needed one last candidate and my name was picked to join the list of successful candidates. I, I think we're trivializing this testimony. Can we celebrate Jesus? Just when the entire list of people were contacted and he has lost all hope, next thing it says they needed just one more. Can this be someone's prophecy tonight? That one more person will be you. In fact, like our father would say, if 10 people are to be blessed, you are the first one already. <laughs> Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amenzi says, my joy is unquantifiable and I can't thank God enough. He is just too faithful to fail. I return all glory like that one leper to give all glory to God. Now, can we just thank God, clap our hands and celebrate Jesus for every one of these testimonies. People around the world are experiencing the power of God tangibly. Hallelujah. Now let your heart be open as we receive from those sharing with us here physically. Um, even as we thank God for their lives and rejoice. God is truly faithful. God is truly faithful. I believe these testimonies are also encouraging people here. And for those of you that maybe are passing through circumstances, you have heard me read about people testifying. Let your heart truly be reminded of the faithfulness of God. Hallelujah. You're welcome, ma'am. Your name and what the Lord has done. Praise the Lord. Amen. I am P.E. Amadeo Barogedu. Yes, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I came here first on uh, last uh, Miracle Center before the three... The three Sundays yes, before the, the end of the year, before we, then I went to the prayer at the other side. So thank God they gave me gift that first day. I have been attending. Last Sunday, another miracle service, I didn't even write this prayer request to because it has been long. So all the prayer requests, I have not got the answer. I know the answers are coming. So after the apostle have prayed, said, put on where you have uh, where. I just, I don't know what to do, but uh, later when I got home, I just saw that I'm healed of, the, I had a bedroom accident in 1997. And that 1997, it was not just like that, because after that, somebody confessed that they put a banana uh, pill on invisible, on visible, sir, wow. in the bedroom. Ah, when I entered, the, I just sleep and I hit my head. I only see flash of light. And I just said, Jesus, Jehovah. And I got up. Nothing wrong with me. I said, well, thank God. Then I didn't know. After a few days, I started feeling pains here and there. And later, the lady, the girl uh, confessed that Ah, what they did to me. No, when you see me, we'll be running. He asked, why? He said, ah, what they did to me. If they did that thing to somebody, uh, that person will not be able to get up. And the vehicle they will use to uh, take the person to the hospital, they will make that vehicle not to start. I said, ah, Jesus is Lord. But later, as I was feeling the pain, because of, I don't count that thing as something I did, I was not worried. I have never even told the doctor. But I was feeling pains. I used to keep a boneki near my pillow. Even when I put it inside my ear, here, paining me here, paining me here. Was like just like so that week before the last uh, miracle. This thing. this neck, there's a vein here, paining me. Uh -uh. But after the prayer, my dear, my dear, uh, Hallelujah. Not only there, I will open my mouth. You know, in between the two uh, feet now, there's uh, a place there. It's like a vein or bone, I don't know. Will be paining me like, I don't know. So I will put hand in a bony key and put it inside there because of the pains. And glory be to God, everything, even I put... Uh, <laughs> Okay, you know what happened? Since that last Sunday, every time 
I will just do it. I begin to thank God. When I wake up, I will continue to do it, whether it will come. Nothing like that. Hallelujah. Glory be to God in the highest. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we celebrate Jesus for our dear mother? Pains in her body completely gone after the service. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise Go ahead. Lord. Your name and what the Lord has done. I'm Joy F. Young. I came back to give God thanks. I'm the Alepa that's come back to give him praise. Um, sometimes, um, last two years, 2021, I was believing God for, for the fruit of the womb. And I prayed about it. And then the Holy Spirit, sometimes in December, told me, am I serving? And I thought of it. When the ushering department in Kononia had an opening, I started to join and start serving. My very first service that year, that was that first miracle service, I was serving there. And there was a pregnant woman there. And I, I had written in my prayer points that, God, I, I'm believing you. Initially, before then, the enemy called and told me that I was never going to have my own child. So I just laughed about it. And I said, I said, I don't have God. So I stood there. And I prayed, and I wrote it in my prayer points. Then the Holy Spirit, there was a pregnant woman there, and the Holy Spirit told me to hug that pregnant woman. So I went there, I held her, I hugged her, and then it was like, this, the same Spirit, the Holy Spirit told me that I had, the pregnancy had just transferred to me. Believe, so I, I, I believed it and continued my activities um, during that service. Along the line, some, um, some months later, I discovered I was pregnant. And I came back, I was pregnant, I was so shocked, I was happy about it. Even during the pregnancy, even when the enemy had I was pregnant, they tried to attack in different ways. But even when, during, in the course of pregnancy, and when I have series of attack, I'll just tell the Holy Spirit to have mercy on this child have mercy on this child. Even during the pregnancy, the devil kept telling me I was not going to give birth to a normal child. My child was going to die. I was going to die. In fact, so many things that was clouding my mind. I was so scared, but I didn't allow fear to take charge. And I want to go, come back to give God the glory because of I, there are times I shared my problem with my HOD and thank God for the kind of HOD I had and thank God for the department I am in. We normally have one hour prayers all through the night, unlike me that don't have a strong prayer, like maybe they would have just conquered, maybe I had, had a, mis a miscarriage or I'd have issues or maybe it's one thing or the other, but God came through for me. I just want to give him all the praise. I just came back to say thank you. Hallelujah. Cornelia, can we celebrate the faithfulness of God? Celebrate the faithfulness of God. Now, um, turn to your neighbor and say, I honor you. That person may be carrying the blessing that you need. Say, I honor you. Hallelujah. You're welcome. The na your name and what the Lord has done now. Praise the Lord. My name is Rosalind Eze. I've come to return all the glory to God in Jesus' name. I'm a very shy person. Though I used to have testimony, but shyness made me, I couldn't come out. But after last week's uh, teaching, I made up my mind that I'll come and share testimony. I used to have a lot of attacks, both in the dream, nightmare, and everything. I know that there's a problem. So I've been going for deliverance upon deliverance, you know, but yet no rest, no peace, you know, frustration, everything I put on, trouble here and there, not until I come across Apostle Tape. When I come across his tape, something told me that since then I started listening to his tape over and over. That was when transformation started coming. My life started transforming. And um, there was a time I come and counter with him in the dream. He played hand on me. It was like a crusade. I met him. He was one praying for people. Immediately he prayed for me. There's this an old woman that walked out of me. So since then, since then, when I look at my face now, I like my face. But before, I, I know. So what am I trying to say? Since then, even this marine spirit of 18, spirit husband, spirit children, everything ceased. My dream, my dream now, I have a peaceful dream and everything. I find peace now. I have peace around me, internal joy and all around rest. So last week, last week at Miracle Service, when he prayed for people that used to regurgitate food, I came out with a picture of my children. 
I used to do that, also my children too. But by the grace of God, my own ceased, my children ceased. This last week, it has not happened again. Say, I've got to give thanks to God. Can we, can we truly celebrate this faithful God? Hallelujah. I hope you were not just listening to the stories and then rejoicing with how they ended. These are testimonies of the faithfulness of God. Every single testimony you hear was... We to, uh, please just pray for yourself pray lord I'm, don't assume god knows you are here please pray just few, another few seconds as a family of faith can we pray for our father and say lord uphold him by your power by your grace oh god fresh dimension of wisdom of grace supply of the spirit of christ strengthen him oh god are you praying Father, just a few minutes to pray. Lord, uphold him with your right hand of righteousness. Preserve him. Preserve his impact. Preserve your grace upon his life. Preserve your anointing upon his life. Preserve him, oh God. Keep him by your hand. You are the God that has lifted him, Lord. Uphold him with your right hand of righteousness. We bless you. We pray that you will take him. You go from strength to strength. We pray. We activate the scripture that says that every tongue that rises against in judgment we condemn. Are you praying for our Father, for God's servant? Paul speaking, he said, for your prayer will turn to my salvation and for the supply of the Spirit of Christ. In Jesus' precious mighty name, we have prayed. Is someone happy to be in God's presence tonight? Please, can you celebrate God one more time? Hallelujah. I'm so happy and I'm glad. I'm confident there's someone special sitting close to you. Can you look for something to celebrate? I love your outfit. Your shoe is fine. I love your Bible. I love the way you dress. I love your suit. Your tie is fine. Look for something to celebrate. Oh, I love the way you smile. The way you are praying in tongue. I love it. It's powerful. Praise God. Hallelujah. Please quickly, can we have those paying their tithe inside? You are paying your tithe. It's time to offering. I'd like you to package your seed, your prophetic seed, your kingdom investment. But titers, wherever you are, at the basement, outside, please can you make your way to the front of your LED screen. There's a reason why titers are asked to step forward. Now all of us are aware the law of the land of swapping your money. Please do your possible best to do that. No, believers are wonderful people. Don't wait towards the end and bring it to church. No. Praise God. Do your possible best within this week to, to swap, to change your money. Take the old currency to the bank so you have access to the new currency. Don't wait after Friday and the next week someday you put it in the envelope. Church may accept it. Don't forget that God is seeing you from heaven. Praise God. So obey the law of the land by doing what is required is necessary. While we are still waiting for the titles, you know what the scripture said. It said, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measures, pressed down, shaking together, running over, will men give to your bosom. Don't say, I don't have access to money, so God understand. So which means when it's time to release blessing, heaven will say they understand too. He said, let every man give as he has proposed in his heart, every man, not grudgingly of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. So which means the state of your heart matters. Lift up your tithe, your seed, your prophetic offering, your kingdom invest, you are doing a transfer. You are here, you don't have access to cash or thereabout. The PR officials are close to you, just signify. They'll get the POS across to you 
so you can pay your tithe and give your offering. You are here with a prophetic seed. Make sure they are well labeled and well packaged. The Bible says, by a prophet, the Lord brought them out. By a prophet, they were preserved. Your prophet necessarily don't need your money, but you need your prophet grace to rise to a new dimension. Please pray. I can see people still coming for tithe. Pray. Be intentional. It's a year of open door. There are doors that need to open via your sacrificial giving. Last year, you gave normal offering. It's a time to give. By faith, a bell offered by faith. He said, bring all the tithe into my storehouse. There will be tithe. There may be meat. Tithe, 10%. So you package 9% is not your tithe. Tithe, bring it to the storehouse. Prove me now. Say the Lord, if I will not open the windows of heaven and give what? And pour you a blessing. Paul, speaking for God, is able to give your seed another body. Your seed can come as divine wisdom, divine idea, divine inspiration. Please pray. Just a few minutes we are done. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Father, we thank you for everyone that have come to honor you with their tithe, with their offering. We ask, O oh Lord, let the blessing of this house speak for you. In the name of Jesus. The testimony you have had, the next week you stand to testify to the goodness. This is, will be the least you ever give. In this season, may the Lord put your name in the heart of men to honor you. When the enemy knock at your gate, may your seed answer. May your offering answer in the name of Jesus. Please cast your seed, your offering with joy and gladness of heart. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God has spoken to us in this season through the mouth of his servant. And it has been declared that it's our season of open doors. And we've been taught in this house that one of the major ways to engage the word is by making positive word-based confessions. So I want you to lift up your hands, put it on your head and say, I walk in an overflow. Say, I walk in abundance. Say, nothing is stopping me. I'm moving with speed. By the speed of the Spirit. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. Just keep declaring over yourself. Keep declaring over yourself. Keep declaring what you want to see. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8 says that God is able to make all grace. The Amplifier says, all favor and earthly blessings are bound towards us. So that we always having every good thing will abound towards every good work. So speak over yourself. Speak over yourself. Father, we thank you. Oh. Thank you, Lord. Woo. There's an outpouring of abundance. New doors, New doors have been opened. Have been opened. The, land, the land, it is green.
nations. I see the nations. They come to me.
abundance. I am moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost. I am fed. Hey, abundance, speed of the Holy Ghost. Yeah, I am favored. Come on, lift up your voices. Just declare, declare, declare. Come on, speak it over your life. Go ahead and turn that song into a prayer. From the depth of your heart, is someone praying? Moving even by the speed of the Holy Ghost. Someone is praying by the Spirit, by the Spirit, by the Spirit, by the Spirit. Go ahead and pray, declaring upon yourself your destiny, walking in abundance. Moving even by the speed of the Holy Ghost. This we believe. This we believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're going to pray just one prayer and then we'll be seated. I'd like you to cry and ask the Lord to turn you this year to a sign and a wonder. A sign and a wonder. Lift your voice and pray. Not just that you will walk signs and wonders, but you will be an expression, a sign and a wonder. That your life will be a message, a living epistle. Someone lift your voice and pray. It says, I and the children that the Lord has given me, we are for signs and for wonders in Israel. Is someone praying? Shagaparako sada brende gebele kusiata, krata baga presa debele kete fras kata balakusiata, embra kata barandas kata ratos kata brende gebele kuta shada bra askata, krapa kata balada baka te friends gebele kato signs and wonders, living epistles, testaments of the might of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16 says, So let your light so shine, not just to shine, so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. John 15 and verse 8 says, Herein is our Father glorified, that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. Verse 16 of the same scripture says that, 15 and verse 16, it says, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you, that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide. Galatians 1.24, And they glorified God in me God can be glorified in and through a man and they glorified God in me father tonight we're gathered to learn we're gathered to contend for higher levels in the spirit we pray that the ministry of your spirit will be unhindered tonight let your word come with power our hearts are ready speak to us for in jesus name we pray Amen. give the lord a big hand clap and please be seated may the lord bless you it's good to have everyone in church this is koinonia hallelujah i especially want to appreciate a dear man of god and his lovely wife reverend emmanuel opara and his dear wife the fourth church please give them a koinonia god bless you such a lovely and profoundly humble man thank you sir thank you for worshiping with us and then my dear friend and brother quite a surprise from canada pastor fred zamani please give him a big big god bless you such an honor to have you around and um, for our family connecting by way of the internet, we welcome you in the name of Jesus. 
Acts chapter 20 and verse 20. Acts 20 and verse 20. It says, and now I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but I have showed you and I have taught you publicly from house to house. Paul is speaking to the people now. He's saying, I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you. For as long as it has profit, as far as your Christian experience is concerned, he said, I did not hold back. This is the assignment of a good shepherd. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 3 15, it has become an anthem here that I will give you pastors according to my heart, and they will feed you with knowledge and with understanding. Because our growth is at the instance of the word. Acts 20 32. And now, brethren, it says, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and then to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. You must make a commitment like never before to be ever open to learn the ways of God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. When a believer is bankrupt of the word, there is not much that you can do over that believer except to pray the prayer of mercy or to bring that believer under a prophetic covering. But as far as being a victim of the devil is concerned, that is almost the, the believer has brought himself to a point where he or she becomes a victim our security our immunity in this kingdom is access to light hallelujah the bible says the entrance of thy word giveth light and then it gives understanding unto the simple and the lord has spoken concerning us that this is our year of open doors so let's go straight to the word lend your destiny your attention and let's trust God for grace to rise tonight in Jesus' name. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 4. I'm teaching tonight on what I title Exceeding Great and Precious Promises. Exceeding Great and Precious Promises. The Bible says when we start from verse 2, it says, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Verse 3 says, According as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Now you take note. The Bible says that all things that pertain unto life and godliness have been given unto us. But it says, Through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Now let's read verse 4 together. Ready? Want to read, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Hallelujah. We began to discuss um, during the first service on the keys that open doors. And I did state in that teaching that scripturally there are three biblical keys. Please pay attention now. That you desire doors to be open. There are three platforms that guarantee open doors. Number one, we said, was the use of the right key. Doors do not open except and unless you engage the right key. If it is a key and yet not the right one, the doors will not open. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 7. The Bible talks about in Revelation 3 and verse 7, He that hath the key of David that openeth and no man shutteth and shutteth and no man openeth. Hallelujah. So the right key is one of the ways that we open doors. Number two that doors can be opened by knocking. It is possible you do not have the key, but someone at the back end has the ability to open that door, and so you must master the art of knocking. Matthew 7, 7, it says, Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and you shall find. It says, Knock, and it shall be opened. You don't knock and open at the same time. When you knock, you must be patient. This is where the ministry of mercy and the ministry of men comes in. The person who knocks is at the mercy of the one who is willing to open. 
Are we together now? And so you must understand the dynamics of mercy and favor to understand the art of knocking. There are doors that you will need to access, but you may not have the key to open them because at the other end, there are already people there. Remember the, the, the synoptic account of Luke when he was teaching about uh, Jesus' teaching on prayer. A man came and knocked the door of his friend in the night and said, please wake up and give me a few loaves of bread. I've had visitors and now I do not have what to give them. And the friend said, please do not trouble me. It is late. My children are asleep. In other words, the supply is there within the house. But the problem is that the door has been shut. And the Bible says he kept knocking because of his importunity, his persistence. The friend got up and gave him as much as he wanted. Knocking is powerful. When you knock, you obtain help from men. This talks about the ministry of mercy and favor. For everyone that asketh, verse 8, receiveth and everyone that seeketh findeth and he said to him that knocketh it shall be opened it's a guarantee that when you knock it will be opened even for jesus himself he had to knock at the door of our hearts revelation Street 20 behold i stand at the door he said and i knock i stand at the door and knock hallelujah and then number three, we said how that the third way doors open is by supernatural power. This is the ministry of warfare and power. It is possible that doors open at the instance of engaging spiritual power like we have in Acts chapter 16 from verse 25 to 27. Acts 16, 25 to 27. At midnight, the Bible says, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them. The next verse, it says, and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors opened. There was no mention of keys. There was no mention of knocking and yet the doors open. Doors can open when you rattle the foundation that holds them. Hallelujah. So, I told us we'll be exploring these mysteries. Tonight, I want us to look at a few keys, and then God will grant us grace. Hallelujah. Now, the Bible essentially, like you have been taught, the Bible contains three things in this category. When you open up your Bible to study, you will have an encounter with three dimensions of spiritual realities. Number one, promises number two principles number three prophecies please do not assume you understand what i'm saying that every time you open your bible scripture is a compendium of promises number two principles number three prophecies and i did teach us that in this kingdom the promises of god represent his commitment to the believer are we together? The promises of God are captured in scripture so that the believer can know the extent of God's commitment. If you cannot find it in the word, then God's power will not sponsor the manifestation of it because his power always follows his word. The Bible says, and the Lord walking with them, confirming the word, not confirming their movement, confirming the word with signs following. So the Bible essentially contains promises, contains principles, and contains prophecies. And all of them are important if your spiritual life is to be rich and you are to walk experientially in victory. You must understand the promises of scripture, then you must understand the principles, the modus operandi of the kingdom. In fact, when Jesus began to teach what we know to be the Beatitudes, once and again he would teach them communicating different mysteries of the kingdom using stories cutting across agriculture family life etc he was bringing them into a comprehension of the ways of god sometimes he would leave them without interpreting it and then when 
um, he was with the disciples in a private meeting, he would now give them the interpretation. An instance was the parable of the sower. Hallelujah. Are we still together? So the Bible contains promises. The Bible contains principles. The Bible contains prophecies. Now, you are never able to manifest the reality of open doors using keys in ignorance. Most believers, please listen, most believers do not have the kind, the requisite knowledge. This is a kingdom that functions based on high level spiritual illumination. I would drum it again and again that in ignorance, the believer remains defeated, even though a believer. In ignorance, the believer remains defeated, even though a believer. Galatians chapter 4 says from verse 1 that an heir, for as long as he is a child, that he differeth nothing from a servant, even though he be Lord of all. Even Jesus, who was the word incarnate, according to Luke 2 and 52, he says Jesus increased in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and with man. Ephesians 4, 18, having their understanding darkened, it says, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their minds. Psalm 82 and verse 5, they know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness, and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Verse 6 says, I have said, Ye are gods, and all of you, not some of you, all of you are children of the Most High. Verse 7 says, But you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, it says, My people, even though they are my people, they are destroyed not for the extent of the power of Satan but for the lack of knowledge that because thou has rejected knowledge it says I will also reject thee so that thou shall be no priest unto me one of the primary assignments of the Holy Spirit based on scripture is to guide us into all truth. John chapter 16, when you read from verse 12 and 13, Jesus was teaching and he said, I have many things to say unto you. He says, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it, next verse, when he, the spirit of truth is come, that he will guide you into all truth. The spirit of God is called the spirit of truth. He is able to guide men into all truth hallelujah i think it's first corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11 first corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11 hallelujah it says for what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man that is in him even so the things of god knoweth no man but the spirit of god next verse it says, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. To what end? That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Hallelujah. Are we together? Jesus taught on the keys of the kingdom. And every time he taught on the keys of the kingdom, he addressed the issue of ignorance. In fact, the Bible records that Jesus wept two times according to scripture. The first time he wept was in John chapter 11 and verse 35 when he was at the tomb of Lazarus. The Bible says he wept and they, they commented on his crying and they say, oh, how that he loved him. He wept as a result of compassion. The next time Jesus would cry was over Jerusalem. The Bible says he looked at them and said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, if only thou hast known, even in this thy day, the things that pertained unto your peace. He says, but now they are hidden from you. Ignorance is dangerous. Ignorance means the absence of light. Ignorance also means the absence of sufficient knowledge. 1 Corinthians 8 and verse 2. The Bible says, If any man thinks that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. Are we together? So to engage the keys of the kingdom, 
so that you can open doors and command results there are a few things that you must learn and my assignment this night is to open you up since doors can open through keys i have a responsibility to teach you how to use the keys of the kingdom to open doors just because you have access to a key does not mean the door will open you must know how to engage the key so that the doors be open in the name of jesus may you find knowledge tonight yeah. hallelujah essentially there are two principles that govern engaging keys when it has to do with using the keys of the kingdom to open doors there are two spiritual principles irrefutable non-negotiable principles that must be in place otherwise the keys of the kingdom will not work are you ready now key number one is the knowledge of the spiritual provisions that are available in Christ the first the first principle that governs using keys to open doors is the knowledge of the spiritual provisions that are available to the believer in Christ that means you must know what is available in Christ otherwise you cannot even engage with it the knowledge of the spiritual provisions that are available to the believer in Christ that is the first principle as a rule of thumb in ignorance of the promises and the spiritual provisions that have been made available to the believer you cannot walk in dominion please pay attention Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3 Ephesians 1 and verse 3 blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ the Bible says who hath blessed us with how many all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ we've been blessed the Bible says with all spiritual blessings but the Bible says they reside in heavenly places and in Christ our assignment is to transport it to become our experience here and now for as long as it is locked up in the realm of the spirit in Christ there it may not directly profit the believer we must know how to translate these realities here and now we just read from 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 12. The Bible says the Holy Ghost comes to show us the things that are freely given. He wants us to know. That means you can be given a gift, but in ignorance it does not profit you. The Holy Spirit, which is of God, we were given the Holy Spirit that we may know the things that are freely given unto us of God. Say that I may know. One more time, say that I may know knowledge is important in first peter chapter 1 and verse 4 we read that earlier on the bible says first second peter my apologies second peter 1 4 the bible says give it to us please second peter whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious promises now i decided to capture this teaching using this expression i want you to look at how paul puts it on one hand he calls it all spiritual blessings in heavenly places on in another rendition he says all the things that have been given to us and now he uses an expression that is so powerful he said the, the vastness of what the believer has been given in christ he says it is given to us exceeding great and precious promises this is what God gave us exceeding great and precious promises now notice that by these what are the these the promises that by these we might be partakers do you know what that means until this exceeding great and precious promises find expression in your life 
people are always right to doubt the validity of the divine life at work in you the presence of the exceeding great and precious promises is what confirms and validates the reality that you are a partaker of the divine nature these blessings were given to us that by engaging them and have them manifest in our lives for instance when you carry the favor of God in an unusual dimension, that immediately tells that you are a partaker of a life that is not natural. Are we together now? That you command possibilities at that dimension by those exceeding great and precious promises. It shows for a shorty that you are a partaker of the divine nature. Many believers today are unable to manifest the possibilities of the kingdom because of ignorance. Ignorance of these exceeding great and precious promises. What are they? If Paul gives them such a beautiful title, what are they? Are we together? If I tell you, you have a treasure in your house, and everybody keeps passing and saying you have a treasure it is only wise to go back and find out what could that treasure be exceeding great and precious promises he didn't give this to some men of god he didn't give this to some individuals this is the inheritance of the saints in light now whether you will walk in the reality of it or not is a different thing altogether but you must know this for a fact that we have been given this exceeding great and precious promises. I wrote an example of a few promises here and I want to walk through them so that God will grant us grace tonight. Genesis chapter 12 from verse 2 and 3. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. Yes, we look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever Yahweh, Yahweh. Now watch this. Believers, you know I have told you that without the word of God proceeding from him, the power of God has no ministry. The power of God is only activated when the word goes. If the word is not released, the power of God remains inert. There is no ministry whatsoever. The, the assignment of the anointing is to validate the speakings of God. So if the word of God has not gone forth, the anointing does not have an assignment. This is to Abraham, and I will make of thee a great nation. Say promises. And I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shall be a blessing i love verse 3 it says and i will bless them that bless thee and curse him that cursed thee and in thee koinonia shall all the families of the earth be blessed exceeding great and precious promises as at the time he was telling this man called abraham he called him out of awe of the chaldeans and was going to lead him to a place of destiny and he gave him exceeding great and precious promises let's look at a few more genesis 17 6 as i list them and as you write and as we you know quote some of them i want you to internalize it these are a representation of God's commitment to your life this is how far he can go as far as your life is concerned and I will make Joshua Selman exceeding fruitful and I will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of thee this is is listen listen I hope you know that these are not just scriptural renditions. For you, it can be a verse that was written by Zondava or White Taker House. But the Bible calls them exceeding great and precious promises. That until these promises find expression in your life, we will be in doubt as to whether you are a partaker of the divine nature. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful. And I will make nations of thee. 
So don't ask how a man becomes a nation. There is a promise that sponsors that possibility. How do ordinary men command influence across nations? They, they stand upon the promise. There is a promise that sponsors every possibility you see. I will make you exceeding fruitful and I will make nations of thee. He didn't say, and I will bring kings to you alone. Kings will come out of you. When kings come out of you, then what is your own name? Are we together? Don't be distracted. Exceeding great and precious promises. In no particular order. Jeremiah 33 and verse 6. God is waking someone up and saying you have been walking in defeat as if I didn't say anything. You have not brought the words that have spoken back to me behold I will bring health and cure he says I will cure them and I will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth exceeding great and precious promises you can stand in faith and declare no it is not sickness that will take me to the grave I reject it because I am standing on a promise listen Please learn this because the days that we live in, many arrogant people will argue this away to their detriment. I will bring you health and cure. I will reveal to you the abundance of peace and truth. That means being healthy is not enough. If you don't have peace, you are still sick. Are we together now? I will not only give you health, the covenant of peace, nothing missing, nothing broken. Jeremiah 29 11. I don't know who this is for. It says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. They are thoughts of peace. This is not a general statement. It's up to you to receive it as these words come. These are the exceeding great and precious promises. Thoughts of peace are not of evil. God is not thinking evil of me. No, God is not thinking evil of me. His thoughts towards me guarantees that there must be an expected end. Are we still together? Job chapter 5 from verse 19 to 23. Exceeding great and precious promises. You must know what these promises are before you know how to engage them. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in, in seven, there shall no evil touch you. Do you believe that? Yeah. Verse 19. Or verse 20 now. In famine. Are we, are we right on that? In famine he shall redeem thee from death. And in war from the power of the sword. No devil will take my life through the sword. Because I am standing upon an exceeding great and precious promise. It looks like it's too good to be true till you believe it. God is only committed to what you believe. Not just what he said. In famine he shall redeem thee from death. And in war from the power of the sword. Reading to 23. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue. Neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. 22. At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh. Neither shalt thou be afraid of the beast of the earth. Why? For thou shalt be in covenant with the stones of the field and the beast of the field shall be at peace with you so listen don't ask daniel why the lions did not eat him up he says there is a covenant that ensures your environment should not hurt you not the sun that smites you by day nor the moon by night there is a covenant with the elements of creation they have been mandated to support what i represent that if i enter any city at my arrival the elements is an echo from the spirit to have the sun the moon men the seas that they stand in partnership with the things that i represent if you do not believe this the sun can smite you that means if anybody uses the sun against me you are wasting your time the covenant came before your arrival you shall be at peace with the leagues the stones of the field there was an instruction that was given to them so you can enter a city 
and someone who is supposed to bless you is made to return back from his journey because you came there is something speaking mm. exceeding great and precious promises listen these are the truths ladies and gentlemen that makes other people look like they their lives are a plethora of coincidences they are not mistakes these realities are programmed through knowledge holy 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 Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. It's the Lord God Almighty. It's the Lord God Almighty. My life is full of your glory. My life is full of your glory. So if it is happening to someone and not you, it's because you are not standing on that scripture. Exceeding great and precious promises. Kaliba rosasi ke prende ke balatuzia. Shavraga baratos ka prende ke beletuzia. Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 1 and 2. We are considering exceeding great and precious promises that God placed a covenant and swore upon this. Finding no man greater than him, he swore that by these two immutable things, it is impossible for God to lie. But now saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you, I like this one, by thy name. I didn't call you as a crowd. I called you by name. Thou art mine. Reading to three. It says, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with you. I told you that there are times that the storm will not even come close to you. But there are times that in the midst of the storm, verify who is in your boat. If Jonah is in your boat, start praying quickly because you are about to die. But if Jesus is in your boat, find peace. They shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon you. Verse 3. The Bible says, For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom. Look up, please. Have you seen a kidnapper catch someone? You, you know the kind of amount they mention? God said, I took Egypt and gave it as a ransom for you. Even Ethiopia and Sheba. This is how much he places value on you. Do you believe this? Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. I'm showing you exceeding great and precious promises. This book of the law, he says, shall not depart from out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein, for then shalt thou make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. A man can have good success if you are standing on this exceeding great and precious promises. Are we still together? Isaiah 49 and verse 16. God is speaking to someone here. Wherefore we have been given this exceeding great and precious promises. Read with me 49, 16. Behold, I have graven thee upon the palm of my hands. Thy words are continually before me. Can you see this? This is an expression of how determined God is. Do you know what it means to be at the palm of his hands? He says, all that you have given me, I have kept, John 17. And none is lost except the son of perdition. But I know whom I have believed, he says, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed 
unto him even against that day Psalm 91 let's start from verse 3 then we'll go to 5 to 8 surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler from the noisome pestilence verse 5 it says then thou shalt thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night nor for the arrow that flyeth by day reading to 8 nor for the destruction that wasted in noonday uh -huh. a thousand shall fall by thy side and ten thousand by thy right side but it shall not come nigh thee verse 8 it says only with your eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked jump to verse 12 please verse 10 now jump to verse 10 it says there shall no evil befall thee neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling 11 for he shall give his angels hold on I hope you know even Satan before Jesus testified that this scripture is true at the temptation of Jesus Satan quoted it that God said he shall keep he was aware that when his angels are kept not even him can do anything he shall put his angels charge over thee to keep you in all your ways verse 12 they shall bear thee up on their hands lest thou dash your feet against a stone go to verse 15 he shall call upon me and I will answer him I will be with him in trouble I will deliver him and honor him 16 with long life I like this one with long life with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation believers please hear me don't just jump and get excited for nothing while it's good to rejoice I want you to see the extent of God's commitment to you that he has covenanted with himself these are the exceeding great and precious promises that by them ye might be the partakers of his divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in this world through lust can we continue job 22 and verse 29 job 22 and verse 29 god is damaging ignorance from someone's mind you must be aware of that which has been written concerning you when men are cast down he says then shall thou say there is lifting up and he shall save the humble person there is no going down for me in the name of Jesus Christ there is no going down for me the Bible says when men are cast down for you it shall be that there is a lifting up first John chapter 5 14 and 15 first John 5 14 and 15 is God speaking to someone first John 5 14 and this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything not according to our tears not according to the vastness of our troubles if we ask anything according to his will he heareth us 15 and if it is true that he heareth us, then whatsoever we ask, we know that we have our petitions that we have desired of him. Listen, when you are full of light and knowledge, let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, there is a way that you conduct yourself and there is a way that you speak. Let me show you a scripture that blessed me so powerfully. Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 20. Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 20 it says to the law and to the testimony if they speak not according to this word it is because there is no light in them there is a way that a believer speaks when the light and the power of God comes upon you are we together now you will never hear me say some things about my life not me no way 
my destiny is too expensive for the risk of ill communication no most of us have destroyed our destinies because we do not know this exceeding great and precious promises and you see it is from the abundance of that which is locked up from within your heart that the mouth speaks most of us what comes out of our mouth is pungency and destruction over our own lives and others no wonder our lives continue to recycle pain and defeat it matters your communication that your speakings must be full of power and life it says do not say before an angel i made a mistake you must learn to speak my wife this one that there is nothing now what are the children going to eat we are just miserable people no 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 i may not see wind i may not see rain but in the name of jesus i know that the valley shall be filled with water see our fathers who gave us this baton this is how they lived and most of us have not come to half their results and yet we have the audacity to edit and argue with so many things i was watching it was kenneth copeland now in his 80s and this man standing strong speaking flying himself there are some things you can't pretend for long if you are lying it will show eventually are we together yes the bible says to follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise exceeding great and precious promises now the Bible says in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16, it says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Believers, please listen. In all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, and singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. I learned this as a spiritual principle. Your dominion in this kingdom is predicated upon your sound knowledge of the promises of God most of us cannot quote three or four or even show even five scriptures that support your confidence to stand in this life i'm not into this ministry thing me i'm just an average person the devil does not care when he comes he bulldozes anything that does not carry the word hallelujah the average believer you can listen to the average believer and know that this person is not a student of scripture there is a way believers who are immersed in the word it it must implicate you there is a way you speak do not say it does not matter it is the path to excellence wherefore we have been given these great and exceeding precious promises many of us right now we come to church and we just hear and nod and say amen thank you praise god wow nice sermon and you go back when challenges come before you all that you you re, you respond back to the challenge with is sympathy wise sayings and cultural admonishments unfortunately none of these three has the power to drive satan when the devil comes, he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Satan does not come for counseling. He does not come for discussion. He does not come for negotiation. When he arrives, he's to kill, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The moment Satan came to Jesus, Jesus would have said, Satan, sit down. I created you. Let's discuss this issue. Why are you like this? Was that what he did? It is written but I know what is written that's why I can use it against you it is written and Satan too said it is written I'm not in ignorance I know some things too you must be full of the word this year you must be listen you must be full of the word this year I'm not just talking of this church thing we do and then you go out and speak as if you are an idol worshiper you must be you must be sound in scripture you wake up in the morning this is the day the Lord has made 
I bless the Lord for this day. I decree and declare, I speak and I command my morning. It shall be unto me as God said it would be. Don't let people tell you, leave this thing. Let's talk. We are Nigerians. We know what is happening. You keep speaking like that. The person who is leading you into derision has somebody who is covering him in prayer. And you may be standing and it will first destroy you before you learn your lesson. I choose to reorder my life, to guide my life with precision. I, I remain a student of scripture, exploring like an archaeologist the mysteries of the kingdom. I want to know the promises of God. There are times that you go online and just download scriptures. What are the promises of God concerning your life, your health, your longevity? Bring them together. You don't need to know everything at once, but have, a re have representations across every area of your life and meditate upon it. It says meditate on these things. Give yourself wholly to them that your profiting may appear unto all. Why are things not working in my life? Every door closed. The person who promised to help me has now changed his mind. Instead of calling the person and saying, I will never let you go. Apostle said, knock. That's not the way to knock. You knock that way, it will never open. They will seal it even again because of that attitude. It's a spiritual experience. You go back. What are the forces that control favor? Why is this person not attending to me? And you begin to program life right from your room, right from your house. As you step out, you are stepping into an atmosphere that has been programmed already. You arrive somewhere and someone calls you and says, I was just about to travel. Something said, wait. That something was you and God doing business in the secret place. Keeping your helpers waiting for you. Are we together? The psalmist said, I lay me down and I slept. I waked for the Lord sustained me. When you are going to bed, you don't go to bed wondering if you wake up. No. God bless you. See you tomorrow with confidence. See you tomorrow. Not I don't know what will happen. God bless you. Sleep well. See you tomorrow. What is the guarantee that I will enjoy my sleep? Oh, um, I don't look for anybody's trouble. No, that is, that is an ignorant believer's talk. The Bible says, I lay me down and I slept. I wait for the Lord sustain me. Then the Bible says it is vain to wake up early in the morning and to sleep late in the night. Is that true? Only to eat the bread of sorrow. But the Bible says he giveth his beloved sleep. You can use that scripture to attack sleeplessness. That spirit that keeps me awake in depression, the Lord rebuke you because it is written that he gives his beloved sleep. It is the keeper of Israel who does not sleep nor slumber. I am his Israel, so I will sleep. If I wake up, it should be that I am diligently pursuing destiny, not that it is lack of sleep. Anybody here going through that circle of tragedy in the name of Jesus and standing upon the authority of the word, we declare you are set free right now. Yeah. Hallelujah. We live in a world where evil continues to multiply. And we know it is true because the Bible tells us that wickedness will increase. It is true. But you have to define the boundaries of your own immunity. You must know these exceeding great and precious promises. While you are sitting down right now, how do you know that someone is not planning evil against you? I don't look for trouble. I'm not even famous. Go and read the book of Job. They asked Satan where he was coming from. I said it to my people in Lagos this morning. He was coming to and fro the earth. You know how far the earth is from one place and yet the devil is that determined. So don't say he was in the US. He still is. He can be back. <laughs> determined to destroy. And yet there was a statement. Have you considered my servant Job? And Satan gave a fearful testimony. A man that is perfect and eschewed evil. Hear what Satan said. Does Job fear God for nothing? Verse 10. 
Here's what Satan said. Has thou not made a hedge about him? Who is testifying? Satan. You have made a hedge about him, number one. You have made a hedge about his house and about all that he has on every side. May God take us to this dimension. Whatever, listen, whatever Job knew, do you know how, no wonder he was the wealthiest man in the East. Why won't you rise when you are covered? Your house is covered. All that you have is covered. Satan testifying, I came there, but I could not do anything. Listen, this thing you see is a deep mystery. That means when Satan comes to you and cannot get you, the next place is your house. If you cannot get your house, the next thing is all that you have on every side. Your relationships, your what? This is the progressions of his attack. I came to Job. I saw him fortified. Then I went to his house. The same thing on him was in his house. Then I went to his businesses, his relationships, and I gave up as Satan. I am bringing you report, God, I could not do anything. Imagine a business like that. Imagine a ministry like that, fortified by knowledge. You thought that Job went to build a fence around, even Jericho fell. So it's not talking about something physical. Some of you are covered, but your business is so exposed. Now Jericho was shot. Dexterous building. Nothing came in. Nothing came out. When your life becomes fortified like Jericho, you see, most of us live very risky lives. We just hope that things will not harm us. This is not administering fear. This is showing you that the excellency of the God life made manifest to you is at the instance of the knowledge of this exceeding great and precious promises. I truly believe that in my lifetime until my assignment is done, no man born of a woman can take my life. I truly believe this. This is not blind confession. I've seen the burning bush. That's why I'm speaking. The Bible says the path of the just is as a shining light. I will never have a worse year. A worse year before that will make me admire yesterday because of how destructive tomorrow is. No, my tomorrow is always an adventure that will outdo yesterday eternally for as long as I'm alive. Listen, carry this mentality, whether for ministry or business. Don't say last year, look how things were. It's your responsibility to change it. Compare what is happening to what is written. Match them together. That is the assignment of faith. This is what God said. This is what is happening in my life. Don't feel discouraged, but let that become your next assignment. You must force them, force what is happening to be like what has been said. Hallelujah. The more you grow your health will deplete. No, 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 no. I will take responsibility by seeking advice from doctors, but there is no devil that is going to use the factor of age to destroy your body. My blood will flow with obedience from my head to my toe. Is that true? Yes, sir. Believe just, believe junk and cloud your spirit and allow the devil program all kinds of things. So this is how I will die. People died at 45, at 50. I sympathize with them, but God has brought me as a voice of deliverance. And that we have to, you will hold your life like a tape and draw it till it gets to the last place. You know how a tape is? It may look small, but you can draw it to the last. How about prosperity? I reject poverty in the name of Jesus Christ. I reject it. Forever, I reject it. This is not, I will always tell you that this is not some Pentecostal jamboree because you just want money for cars and houses. No, we are mature and disciplined believers. But anyhow you look at it, I still hate poverty.
Are we together? It incapacitates people, it pushes you fastest to the corridors of compromise. There are many good people who can become beasts because of poverty. I have taught you that the only reason why Israel goes to Egypt is hunger. When there is hunger, hunger can take Israel to Egypt. Please reject it. Reject it in the name of Jesus Christ. It is not a measure of spirituality to not be able to take care of your children. It is not a measure of spirituality for your young children to be loitering around neighbors' homes. That's how they get introduced into all kinds of rubbish because of hunger. Don't say it is bringing glory to God. Reject it in the name of Jesus Christ. The blessing of the Lord is in my house. According to Psalm 112, blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. Listen, as at the time you are saying this, there may be nothing in your bank account, nothing in your pocket. Your assignment, it is what you are engaging that will make it happen. His seed shall be mighty upon earth, the Bible says. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Verse 3 says, wealth and riches shall be in his house. You know how you have a bulk room, you have the vault in the bank. That's where money stays. It's from there you take it and use it, but there is a place. And the Bible says your house will become the reservoir of the supplies of heaven. Then you can become a blessing. You can never help the poor by being one of them. No. Hallelujah. There are many people who have embraced that lifestyle of poverty as a sign of spirituality and they watch very simple things that the presence of financial resources can get done. There are people depressed. I'm not trying to demean, but someone gets depressed because of 100,000, 10,000. Is that the will of God? And his whole life just ends. You wake up by two and you see someone roaming around. You think God is speaking to them. It's worry, worry, worry. Listen, 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 please. And if you don't understand the kingdom and you don't love God, then you don't understand what I'm saying. Because what you think I'm saying is not what I'm saying at all. I am not, I am not massaging the, the ego of godlessness and a blind pursuit for material things that is not connected to kingdom. When we teach wealth in this ministry and in this vision, we always teach it with respect to the program of God. Because there are many people who don't love God. They have an obsession for money. They can kill for money. What you need is to come out when I make an altar call here. Not to receive an impartation for wealth. No. You need your spirit man. That regeneration first. Hallelujah. There are many people who are not born again. But when they hear teachings like this, especially when you begin to talk prosperity, they are happy because it appeals to the lost that is already eaten within them. No, that is not what we're advocating. We're kingdom people who know that the name of Jesus is so heavy and that it takes resources to lift it high for the nations to see. This is the standpoint that the blessing of God made all of you receive a warning from God. He suffered no man to do them wrong. He reproved kings for their sake, saying, Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. It will not happen because you found it in the Bible. It happens because you believe it and you are willing to engage it. But it then happens by knowledge. It's easy to quote it now when it is said in church. But can you be alone at home and still quote the same thing with confidence? He suffered no man to do them wrong. He reproved kings for their sake, saying, Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Hallelujah. So the first principle that controls the use of keys to open doors is the knowledge of the promises of God that the Bible calls exceeding great and precious promises. You must know the promises, but then in addition, you must know the conditions that are connected to the promises. Your knowledge is incomplete, except and unless you also know the conditions. Are we together? I shall not die. That is half confession. You must finish everything. 
I will be above and not beneath. There were some things that were said before that statement. So most believers just find where the promise was mentioned and we take it without understanding the conditions connected to it. This is very important. That leads me to the next point. What is the second principle? When you want to use keys to open doors, the faith to engage the promises so that they deliver. The faith to engage the promises so that they deliver. The faith to engage the promises so that they deliver. That the promises on their own, knowing them is important, but until they are engaged, they cannot deliver. Luke chapter 1 and verse 45. Blessed is she that believe, for unto her there shall be a performance of those things that were told her by the mouth of the Lord. Just because the Lord said it, does not mean that there will be a performance. There is another factor that is responsible for performance. Faith to engage the promises to deliver. In one word, you have learned here that faith is obedience. In one word, faith is obedience. There cannot be obedience until there is an instruction. You see, if I do not ask you to come, and you start walking here people are safe to interpret it as worry wandering around or madness your movement is only called obedience if I ask you to come are we together now Job chapter 36 and verse 11 Job 36 and verse 11 God is changing someone's life if they obey and serve him, the Bible says, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Is that in your Bible? The condition. Don't just say, I claim prosperity. I claim pleasures. That is a blind, ignorant believer's approach. If they obey and serve him. So make sure your obedience is in place, your service is in place. Then the latter becomes a reality in your life. Isaiah 119 if ye be willing and obedient ye shall eat the good of the land there is good in every land Abuja is a good land Lagos is a good land Zamfara is a good land is that true Europe is a good land Canada America anywhere across Africa no matter how politically degenerated respectfully speaking that nation is the bible still says there is good in every land but your portion only comes to you if you are willing and obedient hallelujah <laughs> someone once told me that he came i think he came to his office in the morning and he saw some, a physical some kind of charm they they you know grounded pepper that you are still seeing the seed red hot pepper they just poured it in, <laughs> in front of the person's office and i asked the person what did you do you know and the person was, ah, so this is how they want to program a hard life a painful life you know the way pepper is to the eyes i said look my friend <laughs> i now i don't i don't downplay that we we have to deal with people based on the realms we meet them there are realms where you have to sympathize with them, take it easy and explain their victory. There are realms where you just pass and move on. When Archbishop Benson Idahosa, they brought, I think, a chicken or something for incantation, and they went to cook it and eat it because a body without a spirit is dead. Instead of wasting the body too, you remove the spirit and eat it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1. I like this one. 28 from verse 1. It shall come to pass, 1, not 19, 1. Shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord. Are you seeing conditions there? To observe and to do all that I command thee this day. That the Lord your God shall set thee on high. Above how many nations? Please talk to me above all nations of the earth do you really believe this 
Look, my little children saying, I believe it. May God bless them, our Koinonia children. Celebrate them again. By the time they get to our level, they will be by far better than us. In the name of Jesus. Next verse, verse 2. Deuteronomy 28. And all these blessings, what blessings? These blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. Be patient while we read. Verse 3. What are the blessings? Blessed shall thou be in the city. Is Abuja a city? That means I must be blessed in this city. Blessed shall thou be in the field. The field is where you sow. Your business, your work, your ministry, whatever it is. To be blessed means you are empowered to excel. You are empowered to prosper. Verse 4. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body. Shout amen. amen. That means you will never give birth to any stubborn child who will become an armed robber. Say amen. amen. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body. Please keep it media. And the fruit of your ground. I will not sow in futility. Blessed shall be the fruit of your cattle, the increase of your kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Verse 5. It says, Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. 6. Blessed shall thou be when thou come in, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. There are people who are only blessed when they come in. They are not blessed when they go out. There are those who are only blessed when they go out. They are not blessed when they come in. The Bible gives us the portrait of a blessed man that you are blessed both when you come in and when you go out. Say amen. amen. Verse 7. The Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before your face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. Verse 8. This is for you now. The Lord shall command the blessing upon your storehouses and in all that thou settest thy hands to do. And he shall bless you in the land which the Lord God giveth thee. Reading to 12 verse 9. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself as he has sworn unto thee. If thou wilt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. Verse 10. It says, all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord and they shall be afraid of you. Verse 11, the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods and in the fruit of thy body and in the fruit of thy cattle and in the fruit of thy ground in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give you. Verse 12, let's read it together. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure the heavens to give the rain to thy land in his season uh -huh, and to bless all the works of thy hand and thou shalt lend to many nations and thou shalt not borrow. I believe this. I am not a curse. I am a blessing. You must believe you are a blessing. Don't get a job and simply because they said we don't know what kind of employee you are. No, I am a blessing. There is an advantage in your life by reason of Christ and his life and his word that dwells within you. Everywhere you go, you are a blessing. Do you believe that? When Jacob went to the house of Laban, he knew that he was a blessing. And when Laban began to multiply, everything began to multiply. Laban used divination to inquire. And they told him it was on account of the presence of Jacob. So when Jacob wanted to leave, he exchanged his daughters to prolong his stay. That you are such a blessing. That your boss in office will say from the day you stepped here the only thing you should bring or your value your physical technical skill is not the only thing you should bring to an organization you are the ark bearer you are taking the ark the presence of god to that organization as soon as you arrive like the ark of god in the house of obed edom things begin to shift and change May that be your testimony. Amen. Do you believe what I'm telling you? Get to a point where people long to see you come and visit them. They will even say, you've not visited us in two weeks because the last time you came, as you were going out, it's as though you kept some souvenirs. 
several things started coming doors opening great things happening to us my husband who was not serious with god started becoming serious studying the word going to church please come again there are people as you are living the same i don't know what you brought but as soon as you left police came as soon as you left somebody hit a car somewhere and they came to say who is the owner of this house as soon as you left i changed that negative atmosphere over you i say it again i changed that negative atmosphere over you shout i am a blessing let the devil hear it say i am a blessing carry this mentality i am a blessing if someone meets you and say what do you have to offer well i may not have the technical skill but there is one thing i have the presence of god and such as i have it can be a gift to you listen spiritual blessings are real gifts they can be given the bible speaking about abraham said he gave isaac everything he had but to all the sons that came from his concubines he gave them gifts he gave them physical gifts but he put something on isaac and said go are we together now so you can greet someone with a handshake i made a covenant with god you know i've, I've said it and i say it with every sense of humility and responsibility that nobody should have to see me twice to be blessed if it is true that he lives within me that i actually say good morning no i will go for a retreat it's true you just lean near somebody's shop to take a bottle of minerals and as soon as you drop the empty bottle and leave you left something there customers just begin to come and the person what happened if handkerchiefs and aprons can carry the presence and the power of God, then it means that an overflow is like is dripping like rain. Listen, this is the mentality I am giving you. If you carry the mentality of a needy and a beggar, one who is waiting for people to be, I'm not just talking in terms of uh, finances and the rest. No, you carry spiritual value. It shouldn't lead to pride, but there is a healthy confidence that you should have. Are we together now? Yes. Someone brings you to his house and says, God bless you, this and that, you are done discussing. And you say, well, could we say a word of prayer? Father, in the name of Jesus, this man has granted us access here. We leave the peace of God with you. And you walk away. Usually people will casually say amen. And then the blessings begin to follow. Koinonia, please hear me. Understand what you carry. Understand the spiritual implication of the anointing and the power and the grace that you have. You may not have physical cash in your pocket, but do not act like somebody who is empty. You sang that song there, that there is an overflow. The Holy Ghost lives in you. There is a spirit in man. You are not a curse. No. Always remember Genesis 12 and verse 3. In thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Indoctrinate yourself. I am not a blessing. I am I'm not a curse. I am not a luggage to anybody's destiny. No, reject it. Perhaps you are staying in the house of someone. Maybe um, your biological parents are not there and you are staying in the house of someone. If they begin to complain that you are not a blessing, go back and pray this scripture. Lord, you didn't bring me to this house to cause pain and inconvenience. In the name of Jesus, I am not a curse. I declare that the life of God within me find expression and become a blessing in this house. Are we together? You go for a job interview. In addition to your certificate, you carry the presence of God. Remember, these are the mysteries that grant us command. In the name of Jesus, beyond the job. Thank you very much, sir. The Bible says if you go to a city and they receive you, it says let your peace remain. That means peace is, is you can distribute it. That man will return back home and the wife that is like Tom and Jerry, fighting up and down, will say, honey, you are welcome home. And he says, tell me you are joking. 
you left your peace a deposit of your peace what is suddenly happening i think we should not fight in this house again the man will call you and say give that guy the job the last one the one i sent out in annoyance bring him back i have discerned that the lord is with you may that be your testimony yeah. there is nobody who is a believer in christ there is nobody who is connected to this vision who should be a cause the moment people start complaining that your life is an inconvenience go for a retreat lord i am a blessing i am not a curse in the name of jesus christ my friends cannot run away from me if there is anything any climate any atmosphere that is not of god i banish it out of my life in the name of jesus i declare i am a blessing you travel to Lagos, you travel abroad, you travel from Abuja. As you are walking out of this service, in the name of Jesus, I expect favor. Because I am in covenant with the elements of creation. By the power of the Holy Spirit, good happens to me all the time. Exceeding great and precious promises. Someone just calls you and says, where are you? We're just done with Koinoni, I'm going home. Hold on, hold on, don't go, just wait there. God gave me an instruction. Aha, uh -huh. now it is working. What is the instruction? He said, I should bless you. I should bless your father. I should bless your mother. Where are they? Listen, you will never be able to share some testimonies till you believe these things. The faith to engage these promises. The faith to engage these promises. Write this down, please obedience to God's word obedience to God's word is the only way to commit God's integrity to perform on your behalf obedience to God's word is the only way to commit God's integrity to perform on your behalf you want to see the power of God made manifest in your life follow the path of obedience obedience is the only way to commit god's integrity to perform the only way to make his power manifest in your life you have that down please write this down too no amount of sacrifice will substitute for the place of obedience no amount of sacrifice and i tell you this from the depth of my heart no amount of spiritual sacrifice will substitute for the place of obedience first samuel chapter 15 and verse 22 watch this now samuel said had the lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord behold to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams next verse it says for rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft and stubbornness as iniquity and idolatry because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord he has also rejected thee from being king. He was saying this to Saul. There is no amount of sacrifice that will replace obedience. If God says go left, even while you are praying and you go right, you are in disobedience. Are we together? Yes. When Hannah cried, she was crying in disobedience together with the young lad. When the Lord appeared, he said, go back to your mistress, your mistress. Follow that path of obedience. Many of us do not understand the power of obedience. There is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to penury. I will not give and yet I must increase. I am brilliant. And God says, I respect you. Go ahead. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. He says, for by your words you are justified. By your words you are consumed. I will not speak. Things will just happen. I, I, I have a special, there's a way I understand myself. 
even Jesus Christ declared spoke spoke about his death and his resurrection that you destroy this temple and in three days I will rebuild it again he was speaking of the temple of his body so if you don't find yourself speaking the word of God over your life and destiny you step into your office you step into your shop in the name of Jesus I lay my hands and I declare it is blessed you are the works of my hands when you are praying don't pray blind prayers pray scripture based prayers scripture based prayers are the kinds of prayers that are consistent with the will of God the Bible says if we ask anything according to his will so don't just ask what is the scriptural basis for your asking Lord bless me today based on what the Bible declares this is the day the Lord has made and it says I will rejoice and be glad in it I expect to rejoice and to be glad in it is that true yes in the Lord's prayer he said when you pray say give us this day our daily bread your daily bread is not just loaf of bread your daily bread means every supply that makes for your sufficiency so when you wake up in the morning prepared by the benevolence of the father is the daily bread for that day insist that it arrives that day this is what makes the life of other people look like they are magicians and then other people wonder why is this thing working for others and yet it's not working for others as a couple you can hold your hands and pray in the name of Jesus, the Bible declares that if two shall agree as touching anything, it shall be done unto them. We decree and declare that in this Abuja, by the mystery of Rehoboth, God is giving us our own space. We declare it. As at the time you are speaking, there may not be anything there. We obtain the grace and we obtain the intelligence to make this happen. And the Spirit of the Lord begins to lead you. Line upon line. If the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Lord, I refuse to be in want because I make you my shepherd. I yield to your wisdom. This is the believer's advantage. Most believers will not live this way and yet wonder why their lives do not reflect the glory of God the gift of a man the Bible declares makes room for him is that true and brings him before great men so in the name of Jesus I declare that laziness is out of my life I will shape my gift since I see that it is connected to favor that every time I come across people let it be that I am valuable enough to be a blessing to them don't just start thinking now that this person is here I am going to get something no think like a giver it is more blessed to give than to receive I'm not talking of giving money there are many other valuable things you can give say amen. amen you're a man of God here in ministry I want you to listen ministry is not going to grow because you want it to grow these are the forces that you engage the force of prayer the force of value, the force of the word, the force of the power of the Holy Spirit. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, the Bible says, I will draw all men. Is that in your Bible? I will draw all men to myself. Wisdom. Many of us lack the requisite wisdom. It said, by me kings reign and princes decree justice that with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness doth not wisdom cry the bible says any man does any man lack wisdom let him cry unto god that giveth liberally lord i see that my decisions are not superior decisions i am sincere but i keep becoming a victim of foolish decisions i take responsibility and based on the integrity of your word i admit that i lack wisdom and i obtain by the spirit of wisdom superior wisdom that comes from above not sophia and the bible says everyone that asketh receiveth lord i am praying according to your will so i give thanks because i receive answers to my prayer that is a believer's prayer suddenly you find out that god begins to lead you to access materials you will come for koinonia that sunday and here is a teaching on wisdom you will go online and hear a message everything around you is flashing wisdom that is god saying your answer has come 
you settle down and you camp with the spirit of wisdom oh i see now i can make superior decisions because wisdom is justified by her children and you begin to make very superior decisions and your life begins to rise and i will give you the keys of the kingdom that these keys come by knowledge and they come by faith even through obedience you engage these doors there is no power in existence that sustains what it takes to keep you down believe me right now economically speaking our nation and the nations of africa there is a lot of financial turmoil you know organizations are folding up several things are happening respectfully speaking even co-laborers in the gospel are feeling the bite of these economic things let me bring you a word of hope there is nothing new under the sun the bible says the thing that was is the thing that is and is the thing that will happen again economic but there were two people who were spared in samaria the king and the prophet and you can be both When there was famine in the land, there were two groups of people who were spared. Kings and prophets have a system of immunity that keeps them. Are we together now? Yes. And somebody will just come to you and say, the Lord gave me an instruction to take care of you and your family all through this year. Are you sure it is God with all my heart? And God begins to open up doors for you. You will think many people who are testifying here are lying if you don't engage scripture. I'm telling you this. Until you become a practitioner of the word through knowledge and faith, you will always think that people are just lying or stage managing it here. Hallelujah. Everything looks difficult until knowledge demystifies it. Light brings that which was hidden to bear. I have cried in this house and I've cried the subject of favor that the days that are coming will require the ministry of favor. I sincerely submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know how people live without the favor of God. I don't know how people survive without the favor of God. If the favor of God is not at work in your life, don't say I can push by. No, no. You will get to a dead end permanently. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. Listen, when I was about to start this work, you see, I read many books. I read many opinions from sincere people. Wonderful templates as to how to run ministry, as to how to do. And I had the privilege of watching different people. And I went to God, I said, Lord, I respect every template that I see, but you are the one who has called me. Reveal to me the blueprints that holds the secret of the future. For with you is the path of life, and it is in your light that we see light. Everybody's weight is working based on what is written, but you are that which is written yourself. Reveal to me the path of life. And that is still my prayer today your life becomes an unending wonder i cried to god and i said father there are some things i do not want to happen in this ministry i never want to get to a point where i have to manipulate people because of economic hardship because of this and that no i'm not in that business forever or stratifying people you you are a rich man come you are my friend how much are you going to give me before i no 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 and Lord, I do not want ministry where today you rise and you are doing well and tomorrow everything deflates as if it was a charm you were using. So what is the secret that makes it sustainable?
if you do not believe what I'm sharing with you, I hate to be a bearer of bad news, but your life will be a consistent misrepresentation of the power of God. Something about your life will drive people from the faith life in a way that you cannot imagine. I made up my mind that as far as God is concerned and this work is concerned, this ministry will remain a sign and a wonder in every sense of the word. Not from a competitive standpoint, no. But that these results are not happening by luck, ladies and gentlemen. If you ever think this ministry is going to go down one day or have a story, please think again. Find out what we are standing on first. Have you built your family on that rock? Have you built your business on that rock? Or are you building on shadows? Co-laborers in the gospel, what are we building on? Are you building on fashion or you are building on this is what is happening now? No. It is only that which is built on the rock that stands. The floods will come. The rains will come. But that which is built on the rock, I assure you that it will stand. Please hear me, ladies and gentlemen. I'm speaking to you because God wants to give us longevity of impact. This balloon success of up today, down tomorrow, no. It is true that life operates in seasons, but the Bible says, whose leaves does not wither. Is that in your Bible? Do you know why his leaf does not wither? Because he does not wait for rainy or dry season. He is like a tree that is planted by the riverside. Your source of supply never depletes. Hallelujah. This is what we believe. This is what we stand for. So that when you are wondering, why is God doing the mighty things that he's doing in and through our lives? Ladies and gentlemen, there is no secret. We found it with the foolishness of a seeker's passion. We found where it was written that you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth and that this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you. You are not the first to be broke. You are not the first to be sick. You are not the first to be in need. You are not the first to be in need of a husband, a wife, a child, a helper. You are not the first. There are people who have gone ahead of us. The Bible says follow them who through faith and patience. You can follow them or keep arguing your path until you cry and weep. Man of God, you are not the first to start a ministry. Apostle, you don't know how much it is to pay. What does that mean? They looked unto him and their faces were lightened. There is a God in heaven, no. It's not just cloud that is above here. There is a God that sits in heaven. He is alive. Please, when you study your Bible, believe it. It's a risk to start leading people if you have not sorted the issue of unbelief. Hallelujah. Very soon as God grants us grace, we will now start our own series of projects and that will be another dimension of signs and wonders again. You see? Yes, absolutely. It is true. There is no, he says, of the increase of his government and his peace, there shall be no end. There shall be no end one layer of impact upon another i've told you that compared to where god is taking us we are just a step out of the cave believe me for his majesty watch to see what our lives become as we serve him watch to see what you become as you serve him you may not look like it now but ladies and gentlemen as you submit to the dealings of the spirit then you will become now are we the sons of god it says and it does not yet appear what I'm saying now is not just what I started saying. These are things we've been saying right from the time there was no comeliness whatsoever. We are the ones who change. The word of God does not change. 
it changes other people yet it is not changed itself rejoice and be glad because the word of God is working rejoice and be glad man of God the anointing may not be at work there but do not rejoice there is a key that you are receiving someday God is going to grant you grace and you will be leading an international ministry and serving the purposes of the kingdom with honor and dignity you be patient and stay with the word get the keys there are many doors to destiny make sure you get all the keys don't line up nations behind you and then be calculating what key do I use when there are nations waiting to pass through you no he that strives for mastery is not crowned except and unless he strives lawfully please hear me there are many of you here in ministry God is still making you and forming you do not be afraid and do not rush be don't go ahead of God be patient let him build that women ministry the way he intended it to be let him build that prophetic ministry that apostolic ministry and you will be reintroducing something to creation that they have not seen before businessman all you see is not all there is don't say everybody must be corrupt and put their hand somewhere you can never rise be careful don't generalize no there, 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 there is a fountain listen job said there is a part which the eyes of the which the the eyes of the the vulture has not seen a part which no fowl knoweth the eyes of the vulture even the whelps of the lion has not trodden don't think it's everybody that rises by crookedness just because that is the only thing you know all you know is not all there is Are we together now don't think everybody God is using is using charms or using all of these things it's easier to serve God than to get charms because when you come to God he maintains everything do you know what it means to maintain all these demonic things that will backfire one day You stand upon the rock you stand upon the word no fear because you know whom you have believed as a man of God you know that the hand of God is upon you I expect favor every day I expect lifting every day God is putting it in the hearts of men to bless me. He will never bring a work and not bring people to stand by you. When I sent you, he said, lackest thou anything. So the thing is to verify whether he sent you. If he did not send you, go back and be patient till he sends you. But if it is true that he has sent you, find rest. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed? This is how we engage keys in the kingdom. Some of you may need to go and write, get at least seven scriptures. Or maybe ten, two, two, two powerful scriptures across the several areas that are, instead of going around to tell everybody about your problems, they can't solve it and they will complicate the situation again. Someone will sit down and say, tell me your whole story while you are looking for 30,000. You will tell the person the whole story and say, I'm sorry, I was expecting some money if you had come earlier. So why did you ask me to sit down and narrate my whole destiny? You removed my clothes in your presence to open up to you, hoping you could help. I will lift up my eyes onto the hills, the Bible says, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord the maker of the heavens and the earth are we together this is how it works in this kingdom this is how our fathers taught us this is how the patriarchs taught us the bible called them elders every one of those elder is worth your study every single one by faith, Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice. Give us Genesis 4 and verse 7. Genesis chapter 4 and verse 7. 
Cain and Abel offered sacrifices and that of Abel was received and that of Cain was not received and he was angry and here's what God told him in fact let's start from verse 6 we're going to do some praying this night and the Lord said unto Cain why art thou wroth why is thy countenance fallen verse 7 he says if thou doest well give us NIV what does NIV say there if thou doest what is right I think that should be NIV's rendition can we get NIV well, let's just walk with this if thou doest right niv says if you do what is right will you not be accepted that means it's not because your name was cain is that there are there is an obedient pathway but if you do not do what is right sin is crouching at your door it desires to have you but you must master it is it that god does not like our own family you know, people send me all kinds of text messages. Apostle, we are praying, though, it's like God does not hear. Please help him tell us we are there, you know. And I know that sometimes they say these things sincerely. Please don't get me. I'm not being sarcastic. It's a job of people. We are shepherds. We should listen to people no matter how, you know, all of the tantrums and everything. That is, that is the whole idea. But, listen to me. I can tell you the same Lord is rich unto all. If you do that which is needful, Apostle, I'm not a giver, but I want to rise. It will not work that way. I am not valuable, but I want to rise. It will not work that way. I don't value relationships and I don't pay the price to invest in it, but I know I must be. No, it will not work that way. These are the forces of knowledge. One genuine kingdom relationship can bless and help you. Some of you have thrown every valuable person in your life. Say, I'm alone. The most important thing is that God is with me. Are you receiving the wisdom that comes from him? Hmm. Are we together? Very simple things become difficult when you do not know how to outsource spiritual intelligence. They looked unto him and their faces were lightened. It's time to start changing genuinely. It's time beyond shouting amen someone god brought you to church to get angry while you are sitting you should tell yourself i am tired i am there should be a holy dissatisfaction as a man of god i'm tired of these games and jamboree that i'm playing in the name of ministry it's time to settle down and really begin to produce results this jumping from pillar to post invites me i am a man of god fighting left and right these petty things no it's time to camp with truth Lord, it's time to produce results that glorify you. Are we together? Your children are stubborn. None of them is listening to you running from pillar to post. You say, go left, they go right. Don't say this thing is in our bloodline. You are watching the devil destroy your future. In the name of Jesus, I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that my children will serve my God. Don't say I've tried my best. You too, you have seen it now. No, no, no. It is not your best that the destiny is looking for. It is God's word. Are we together? You are a man of God and your ministry is not working. Go and do a one, two, three hour prayer meeting in your auditorium, only you. This pray for me, pray for me thing has produced laziness among believers thank god for there's a place for prophetic intercession but there is a place where you take the bull by the horn lock your doors and stay with the one who called you put a mat on the ground and pray father you sent me if i didn't hear you let's verify it here i'm not ashamed to know that i was wrong but let's let's look let me tell you there is a way that you can get angry this is what happened to aa allen he locked himself and told his wife, he said, Honey, do not open this door until the power of God comes upon me. And she thought he was joking. He stayed there until fire landed on his head from heaven. When he went to the crusade ground, the difference was clear. Man of God, you are in ministry and your ministry is not producing results. No signs and wonders. It's time to return back and say, Lord, please, Place upon my life 
that which gives evidence according to acts chapter 4 and verse 33 the bible says and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the lord jesus and great grace was upon them all hallelujah the moment you start tolerating negative things and you smile around it, you are giving the devil room for continuity. Don't wait until it becomes a disaster. The moment it does not look like Christ, pick up the word, the sword of the spirit and begin to engage. Some of you who are going to take a few minutes to pray tonight. I'm charging your heart because in this year of open doors, God truly desires that you walk in certain realms. Listen, if your life does not bear fruit after a time, you will start getting angry. I'm telling you, you will be angry, you will be jealous, you will be envious. It's wounded people that wound others. You must pray that God gives you personal results. And Abraham was old and well stricken in age. Genesis 24 and verse 1. And God had blessed him in all things. All things all things genesis 21 from verse 1 and 2 the bible says and the lord visited sarah as he had said and the lord did unto sarah as he has spoken every stubborn situation that will not bow to you make it bow to the word if it does not respect you let it respect the word for the bible says that the word of god has been so exalted that should be is it romans 1 16 did i get that right Romans 1 16 give it to us let's see Romans oh dear no Colossians 1 16 is it by him all things were made both things that are visible and invisible that's right for by him all things created were created that are in heaven and that are in the earth both visible and invisible whether there be thrones or dominions principalities or powers all things were created by him the word and for him that means even the things that will not bow to you step aside and put the word there and watch them bow to it do you believe what i'm telling you When it's time to engage, you engage with the word of God. Oh, this is the year that I must carry my baby. In the name of Jesus, I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. What is the basis? I am tired. That is not scriptural prayer. That is sympathy. You are spiritualizing sympathy. You go to verses like I think it's Isaiah 54 now. It says, rejoice thou that didst not bear break forth into singing i think that should be verse one did i get that right yes for many are the children sing O barren thou that didst not bear break forth into singing and cry aloud thou that did not travel with child you keep this scripture in front of your phone your laptop are we together now you can get an audio version of this scripture play it on repeat all through the night while you are sleeping you are soaking your spirit in that reality till you start having a godly dream not a demonic dream of you carrying a child the one god gives you as a sign and you wake up knowing that you are ready for your child listen to me please do what you hear me teach you and by the privilege of god's grace i don't claim to know everything but ladies and gentlemen, you should know by now, I will be lying if I tell you I don't know what I'm saying. Some of you need to go back home this night and while you are sleeping, just get some strategic scriptures, put them on audio, put them on repeat. I didn't just start teaching this when we came here to Abuja. It's been so for many years. Put it on repeat. Get very sound worship instead of all these garbages that destroy your spirit man there is gunfire in front of you and you are wasting your time listening to all kinds of things no there is none like you painter of the sky you get those songs and you begin to put them and just 
you listen to all of those songs and they begin to build your spirit man then you wake up in the night and wash it down with tongues then you repeat again then you repeat again then you repeat again when he touched his eyes the first time he didn't see clearly he did the same thing again there are times you don't need to do anything different do it again you wake your wife and say my wife this is why you married me stand up this this nonsense happening in this family must end you stand at that side of the wall let me stand at this side of the wall and let us pray and get some things right and be snoring whereas you are in trouble no there is time for battle my brothers and sisters you don't engage with superstition you take the word is ah, it says take the shield of faith is that in your bible where which you will quench how many all the fiery darts of the enemy oh my light you must break forth abuja hear my voice in the name of jesus the bible says i am blessed in the city whatever has closed the gate of this city i come against you in the name of jesus christ he said i've set before you an open door before you start praying arrange scriptures don't just pray like someone who is not born again no arrange scriptures even if it means to read it read it where are the helpers of my destiny and they don't seem to show up in the name of Jesus I declare did the Bible not say Gentiles are coming to my light I now have the light but I'm yet to see the Gentiles Gentiles where are you I speak to you come to my light kings come to the brightness of my rising for my shame I receive double where no man every man has deserted me I become an eternal excellency joy of many generations the Lord is my light and my salvation of whom shall I be afraid of I am blessed in the city blessed in the country the ministry God has given me you are growing by the power of the Holy Spirit souls have been saved lives have been transformed let the redeemed of the Lord say so I am redeemed so I say so let the healed of the Lord say so hear me you are preparing to go for a conference as a man of God don't just get up and look for the clothes you will wear and go and act as if God did not send you in the name of Jesus Christ when he sent them two by two they return back saying even the devils that means every time God sends you there is a report he's waiting for whatever kills my evidence I curse you in the name of Jesus as I'm going to minister or going for that business meeting help them listen as a man of God know that you are anointed there is a grace upon your life Esther chapter 2 and verse 15 the Bible says Esther obtained favor in the sight of all that looked upon her how many people have looked upon you what came as a result of their looking upon you some of you they looked upon you and that's where trouble came Do you believe what I'm telling you? This is how it works. Walk around your house. Don't say, I have one small room. You speak like that, you will never have a bigger place. The size of the room is not the issue. The Bible says, Elijah told the woman, you need multiplication, shut the door behind you and begin to engage certain things. There are things you do in the spirit, you are the only one who should see it. Let me tell you, Koinonia, hear me. I submit to you by the Spirit of God. Do not get into this life of carelessness and demeaning the sacrifices of men of God. People do not rise by mistake. I'm sorry, don't, don't think that I'm, I'm, I'm... Forgive me if you think it's pride. There are many people who see results and think it just happens. No, sir. Go and find out what people do behind the scenes when you are not seen. Don't be deceived by the clothes and all of these things. Go and find out what happens behind. Are we together? When you have done business with the realm of the spirit and heaven signs, there is nothing the earth can do about it again. 
I sense a strong anointing. God is challenging someone. He's saying, if you keep giving explanations, you will never rise. It's time to start engaging. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, when this ministry started growing, when we were in Zaria, it was largely students. And sincerely, let me tell you from a financial standpoint, how much are you going to get from students? It's not that you are depending on this, but you know what I'm saying. I'm being very sincere with you. And we began to pray. And God started helping, sending help from across the globe. It didn't, it's not the location. Stop giving flimsy excuses. Take the word of God. For as long as you give excuses, you endorse the limitations of Satan. There are seven or eight billion people on earth. Everybody will not tell God no. Is someone listening? Yes. This is what I believe. That we will never get to a point where we'll be stranded as a ministry. No. For as long as the word of God is here, you can change the situation of your life. Your influence is at the mercy of the revelation of the word that you have. There are many doors that have been waiting, waiting for you to turn the key. Listen to me, hear me, businessmen, if all you do in your shop or your store or your organization is buying and selling, except you, you bring in a charm to help you, you will not rise that way. There are times you need to lock your office, remove your suit, wear your priestly regalia. As the CEO in this company, you are not only coordinating sales from overseas. In the name of Jesus, I declare, I stand as a priest and as a king. According to James 2 and verse 26, that a body without a spirit is dead. I activate the spirit of this business. Business, you are a body. The spirit component that keeps you alive, I call it by faith. You see, unbelievers know what I'm teaching you. They do it all the time. We laugh at them yet cannot deny the results. There are many unbelievers, including businessmen, politicians. They never take any risk without consulting the realm of the spirit. No matter how simple the situation is. Don't go out of your house without speaking to your day. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. Don't say, I'm in a hurry, I didn't have time. You don't, you can be baffling and speaking. In the name of Jesus, I declare, this is the day that the Lord has made. I declare that my steps are ordered. For the Bible declares that the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. No confusion and chaos by the spirit of the living God. Souls are saved through my life today. Lives are transformed through my life today. I am a soul winner. The blessings of a soul winner comes upon me. According to Daniel 12 and verse 3, it says, And they that be wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness will shine as the stars even forever. Since I invest my life turning many to righteousness, I must shine like the star, and nothing will stop that rising. Let's go back now to 2 Peter 1 and verse 4. Whereby, 1 Peter 1 and verse 4, my apologies. Okay, yes, no, you're right. Go back to KJV, please. It says, whereby are given to us these great and exceeding precious promises. Now you understand. Are given to us, Joshua Selman, don't say, I don't have anything. Here's what happens many times in our homes. You have your Bible somewhere, but because your ATM is empty, because your pot is empty, because everything is empty, you forget this and you say, I have nothing. You are making the mistake of the wife of the sons of the prophet. 
Her whole house had nothing, but there was a little cruise. And that cruise was saying, if you know what to do with me, I can turn you from a pauper to a blessed woman. Your being a widow is not the reason why you are where you are. When she met the prophet, the prophet said, there is a responsibility component I need to introduce to you. He says, what do you have in your house? She said, nothing. For someone, what do you have in your house? No job except a Bible. What do you have in your house? Nothing except an audio material with 10 scriptures that talk about my victory in Christ. What do you have in your house? I do not even have any serious thing except a little phone that has limited um, memory, that has three or four scripture. And the prophet said, what you have is enough. Go and lock your door. This is what I'm telling you prophetically. Go and lock your door this week. You have been running around people. Everybody knows what is wrong with you because we find pride in attracting sympathy. Everybody, hey, yeah, are you watching? No, shut the door. By the time you shut the door, three hours in the spirit and you are speaking prophetically God will wake many people arise for the sake of my sent one arise for the sake of my daughter arise for the sake of my son listen to me from tonight I want you to make a covenant with God that your approach to any and all matters of your life must be a word-based approach. Say after me, word-based approach. One more time, say word-based approach. Your approach to a financial situation, word-based approach. That means until you have found what the word says, don't act. Don't act, no matter the pressure, remain there. You are about to start a business. What gives you the guarantee that you will succeed? I got some capital. You are already in, you are already in deception. Capital is not what it takes to excel in business. It is not only clients you have. You have wicked spirits that fight the purposes of God. There is the king of Tyre and Sidon. Go and find out. He sits upon a mountain. There is Jezebel. The she goddess that rides upon the horse and prides herself drinking the blood of the Matthias. It takes more than buying and selling to excel. There is a mountain where you climb your commodities, your soul. Except you are ready to sell your soul. There are levels in life that you can never attain unto. He said, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world? Many people have sold their soul to the devil because they are looking for mundane things. But he said, I wish above all things that ye may prosper and be in health, but ensure that while you are in health, that your soul also prospers. Hallelujah. I'm not a prayer warrior, become one now. I'm not really this word people. Please change those kinds of things. Give yourself a new orientation. The way I was brought up, we just prayed a five minutes prayer. No problem. Thank God for those who led you thus far. It's their leadership that brought you here. Now that you are here, open your Bible. Wake up in the night. Walk around your house. In the name of Jesus, I declare, all that the Lord has given me is blessed. In the mighty name of Jesus, shame and reproach is far from me. 2023, in the name of Jesus Christ, you must open up to me. Every month is a door. Every day is a door. Every minute is a door. I speak to you, a father, be open unto me. In the name of Jesus Christ. Negative things happen around your life. You can respond emotionally. You can respond culturally. You can respond scripturally. I give you my recommendation based on the integrity of the word. Every other formula will eventually fail, but the word will stand. Word-based approach. Apostle, right now I am in debt to the millions and to the billions. What am I going to do? stop where you are if you find yourself in a well stop digging because if you keep digging you will keep going down stop where you are 
number one. Number two, go and study all the people who were owing in the Bible. How did they come out? Every time you see an issue of debt and finances, it was the prophetic that brought them out. Whether it was the axe head that fell, the prophetic that brought them out. The, the wife of the sons of the prophet, the prophetic that brought them out. The next thing is to begin to engage in prayer. Lord, grant me direction. What anointing has been allocated for my rising? Because it's not every prophetic grace that lifts you. There were many widows in Zarephath, but to none was Elijah sent. There were some widows that were waiting for Elisha. There were some widows that were waiting for other prophets. He went to one widow and left. Is someone learning? The devil has vowed that you will never have an honorable job. If you agree with him and say amen, it will be so. But you can change the narrative in the name of Jesus Christ. Things are not working for you. Lord, I take responsibility. Grant me grace. It's not always about the devil. Sometimes it is the bankruptcy of wisdom. Listen, if you want God to help you, you must take responsibility in your life. Show me what I am doing wrong. That is making me always fight with my wife. Lord, it is not your will that we keep beating ourselves in front of the children. There is something we do not know. And I am ready to learn. If it is a wrong training or wrong mentorship, I take responsibility. Because pride goes before a fall. The moment you bow down, knowledge comes to you. Immediately. God can send you to one 15 minutes clip online. And that becomes your deliverance. Can I tell you, you don't get results in pride and with pride. This is a disclaimer I must give you before we begin to pray. There are many people who are too big to be helped by God. It takes humility. I come to you, oh God, even if you are in ignorance, come to him. Lord, this situation in this family, I cannot pay the school fees of my children right now. And I've done my best. I'm walking in righteousness. Lord, I pray that you will help me. And because your heart is humble, the Bible says the Lord is nigh them who are of a broken and a contrite heart, Psalm 51. When you cry before him with a broken and a contrite heart, he comes to help you. Can we take a few minutes to pray? Do you believe in prayer? Please, no movement around. We are going to pray. Enough is enough. This is the year that God is stretching you and opening some doors. I'd like you to open your mouth and begin to pray concerning the areas of your life where you know that the word of God has not yet prevailed. Please open up your mouth and pray. The Bible says so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. When the word of God grows, it always prevails. When the word of God grows, it always prevails. Someone is praying. This year, doors must be opened in the name of Jesus. Shaprakatos kete brende ke parakatos kaligata, embraka parakatos ke frete ke pereketas, ke frontas ke berendo shoto pregete beleketa. Someone is praying in the name of Jesus. Exceeding great and precious promises concerning my life, concerning my destiny, concerning the purposes of the kingdom. Someone pray. Those who are following online, make sure you pray. Make sure you pray. Are you praying? Shapra gete beleke taprando kaparuta skia. Access to the exceeding great and precious promises that by these we might be the partakers of His divine nature. That by these we might be the partakers of His divine nature. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
Now, I want you to concentrate on the area that does not seem to work. Don't pray prayers of unbelievers. Lord, what is it? Except if you are praying an inquiry prayer. Otherwise, the scripture you know, place it there. Why is this not working? Lord, your word says this. I engage. I engage with understanding. Some of you is because you have not engaged with understanding. Open up your mouth and begin to cry to heaven. That area you want God to visit you in, go ahead and pray. This threat of death over my life, the Bible declares that I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Death, you have no power over my life. In the name of Jesus Christ, recurrent illnesses, I curse you by the God of heaven. In the name of Jesus, for he gives me health and cure. In the name of Jesus Christ. God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your path is as a shining light that shines more and more, more and more, more and more, even unto the perfect day. In the name of Jesus Christ. I arise and I shine. I arise and I shine. My light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon me. In the name of Jesus, I declare that I am a blessing, a blessing to the nations. According to Genesis chapter 12 and verse 3, that in me and through me, the families of earth are blessed. I declare in the name of Jesus, from Europe to America, from Canada to Africa, and all the 30 states of this nation, you are blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm delivered from six things, yea, even seven things. In famine, I laugh. I'm delivered from the scourging tongues of men. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thou will show me the path of life, for in your light I see light. 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 Turn again the captivity of Zion, like the streams of the Negev. In the name of Jesus Christ. One more minute, go ahead and declare. Declare over your ministry. Declare over your family. Declare over your job. Declare over your assignment that in the name of Jesus Christ, the word of God grows mightily and it prevails. It grows mightily and it prevails. It grows mightily and it prevails. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point. We are wrapping up now. This fire is burning in this place. Luke chapter 5. Give us from verse 1. Luke chapter 5. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of the Lord, he stood by the lake of Gennesareth, 2, reading to 6, and saw two sheep standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Verse 4. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch into the deep. And let down your nets for a draught. Verse 5. And Simon answering unto him said, Master, we have toiled in this Abuja. Master, I was even born in the place of plenty. 
master all kinds of excuses but here is your prayer point nevertheless 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 i know that i may not have paid attention all through 2022 but nevertheless at thy word not at my emotions I did nevertheless my emotions it failed me nevertheless man failed me but this time around nevertheless at thy word I will let the net down verse 6 the Bible says and when they had this done they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break now listen listen please look up go to verse 4 I want to show you something there look very carefully when Jesus spoke to them he said let down your net n e t s go to verse 6 they only let down one net and the only net that they let down in fear was the only one that was filled he said let down your nets all of it financial nets spiritual nets you only let down your net in terms of relationship and that was the only one that was filled now he's speaking to you what is withholding the other nets he has told you nevertheless let down the nets let down the nets let down the nets spiritually let down the nets every aspect of your life can have a catch open your mouth and begin to declare nevertheless at thy word nevertheless at thy word nevertheless at thy word in the name of jesus christ for my health nevertheless at thy word i may be diagnosed of a situation right now but nevertheless at thy word even while receiving treatment i declare nevertheless at thy word my finances may not be healthy right now but nevertheless at thy word go ahead and pray nevertheless nevertheless it's my year of open doors nevertheless I am walking in abundance moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost I am favored I am walking in abundance moving with the speed of the Holy in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I want to speak over your life the prophetic is a potent mystery in the spirit that can empower men can create possibilities in the lives of men I keep praying all the time and asking God to help me that my words will not be barren that I will not waste the time of God's people just shouting and gyrating and making a lot of empty noise what fills our sounds and our speakings is the anointing of the Spirit following his word I prophesied as I was commanded he said and there was a sound I want to speak over your life I want you to truly believe from the depth of your heart you will marvel and wonder at what the God of heaven does in the name of Jesus I speak to you this week not next week this week you are entering by the power that raised Christ from the dead return with strange results return with strange results 
Return with strange results. Return with strange results. Return with strange results. Return with strange results. Hear me. Everything that looks like a financial captivity. I don't know why I keep talking about this. Anyone here who is in any kind of financial captivity, I call upon Ebenezer, the God that helps men. This week, may God raise men to bail you out now. I say to you, this week, may God raise help us to bail you out. Everyone who has been anointed to locate you and hold your hands, but by demonic occurrences, the devil has created a distance between them. I push them towards your direction prophetically. I push them towards your direction prophetically. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. I don't know what city you are from in case you are not in this city wherever it is that you are represented I speak over the gates and the forces of that city in the name of Jesus according to Job 5 I command the elements of creation to begin to align themselves to bet the purposes of God for you hear me when it was time for Noah to know whether it was safe to come out of the ark it was a raven that gave him the signal he sent a raven the raven returned back it is not yet time god can use anything to give you signals because you are in league with the elements of creation hear me the bible says and now the lord of peace himself grant you peace always and by all means i bring you into the covenant of peace 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 hear me if you're a man of God in ministry here if there is anything that represents shame and reproach in your ministry whether financially or in terms of membership go back and produce strange results every career person here who has been grounded in the name of Jesus the son of the living God I declare that a new chapter be opened for you now hallelujah and any family ravaged by the operations of witchcraft that they tie people and don't let them go is now thanks be to God which causes us always to triumph i come tonight by the rod of a higher priesthood and i decree and declare in the name of jesus every door that has been closed by witchcraft i command that door efata be open efata be open efata be open be open be open in the name of jesus christ Businessmen, let me speak over your hands. In the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the Living God, whatever has brought your business down or brought you to struggle by the power of the prophetic, rise to a new level. Koinonia, every manifestation of prayerlessness every manifestation of slumber sleeping away your hours that should be invested in prayer let fresh grace rest upon you now let fresh grace from the altar rest upon you now in the name of Jesus Christ the grace to wake up and pray receive it in the name of Jesus listen the capacity to be a student of scripture the capacity to be a student of scripture 
I found your word and I did eat it. He says, and it was a joy and a rejoicing in the name of Jesus. Passion for the word and the grace to be full of the word. Receive it now. Every scripture in this Bible that is connected to what you need in this season. I declare by the spirit of revelation may you find that scripture may you find that scripture and by engaging it may you commit God's integrity to perform hear me koinoni I'm praying for everybody but in the name of Jesus Christ you cannot be connected to a global apostolic and prophetic ministry like this whether through relationship, through covenant, by whatever means. In the name of Jesus Christ, you have not seen tears in this house. May your crying come to an end now. You have not seen reproach in this house. May everything that spells reproach be far from your life. You have seen ever increasing glory. Let it be replicated in your life. You have seen spiritual fire and fervency. Let it be replicated in your life. And before I wrap up tonight, anyone sitting where God has mandated that it must be yours, I overturn. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. Death has no power over your life, has no power over your children. In the name of Jesus, you will not cry again, for the book is open. In the name of Jesus, hear me. I feel led particularly to pray for people who have committed a lot of finances in managing health concerns and right now it looks like it has depleted them in the name of Jesus not next week this week I call upon my God who is the helper of men may God send you help from his sanctuary so let hope let it rise Darkness trembles in your holy light. Yeah, let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. Go back home today and begin to practice these things. The Bible says, now that ye know these things, happy are you. There are people who have engaged these things and all you see in their lives is glory and honor. Enlist yourself. Don't be a spectator. Don't be a fan. Don't be an onlooker. Go back and engage with understanding. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Wave your hands to Jesus. Father, we give you all the praise. That is how you will be waving in thanksgiving. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. All stand if you can, please. Everyone, please be upstanding if you can. I want to make the altar call right now. There are people in this place. You have not engaged the word that makes for salvation, the word of faith that we preach, the Bible says. And whilst you heard me teaching, the Holy Ghost began to speak to you that the first part of call for you is to make a determined decision to lay everything down because it starts with Jesus every time it starts with any other thing aside from Jesus you already made a mistake it does not start with breakthrough or miracles or impartation in the beginning God that sequence must be restored you are in this place and you are saying apostle I will be glad to make it right with Jesus right now. Perhaps you've never made this decision. You're inside all the overflows to the basement, outside, following online, Jesus is speaking to you. And for those who are saying, Apostle, I want to rededicate my life to Jesus to make it right. 
I didn't even know what I did before, but right now, hearing you speak tonight, I know that God is calling me. God bless you. I'm going to begin to count one to five. Please stand, my dear brother. God bless you for space. As I count one to five, all those who should join this great man, come out and join him right now. One. Koinonia, give them a, a, a big, big God bless you. Two. Run to Jesus. Three. Are you still coming? Come to Jesus. Come. Though we are few, we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before. And this is the song we'll be singing forever. Oh. surrounded by many who have crossed that river before this is the song we'll be singing forever I salute and celebrate every one of you for your courage to stand here and to make this declaration the Bible declares that as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away thank you and for those who are making this decision this declaration from across the globe there is no distance in the spirit while I lead them to pray right there in your home your office maybe a, a, a viewing center somewhere or a rebroadcast make this moment a defining moment make it right with Jesus please lift your right hand all of you who are in front and may I request that you say this after me when you do so mean it from the depth of your heart say Lord Jesus tonight I declare that I love you I declare that I believe in you that you died for me I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I make Jesus my Savior my Lord and my King I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever I declare that I'm a child of God I walk in the newness of life I go forward ever and backward never in the name of Jesus keep your hands lifted let me pray for you all to Jesus I surrender all to him I freely give that's what you have done I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily that is your declaration Based on the authority of scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God. For the Bible declares that whoever will call upon the name of the Son of God shall be saved. You have called upon that name, therefore I declare that eternal life is yours. In the name of Jesus. Based on your confession, I declare also that the power of sin, Satan, hell and the grave, let it be broken over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ 
I commend you to the ministry of the Holy Spirit and the ministry of the Word. May you be grounded and established in righteousness. From tonight, you go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. I'd like you to please follow the counselors. They are waving their hands. Just a moment, they will attend to you. They will attend to you, huh? Let's celebrate them as they go. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, very quickly, let's just take two announcements and we're done for the night. The first is to reiterate on the announcement I made last week. Um, the security and transport department is still open for interested persons. All those within the house who want to serve with the security and transport department, you are encouraged. They are particularly... Um, they're asking for people who have security training, military background, or you work with any of the intelligence agencies. Here is an opportunity for you to serve. All those who are interested, you can wait at the PR desk outside immediately after the service, and someone would come to attend to you. Or perhaps you want to submit your application online. Um, you can use, I think they've shortened their email address. They had one long one last week. and. Thank God that they've shortened it, ksfabuja at gmail.com. So that's easy. You can send your application addressed to the head security and transport department. I'm told that the closing date is today by 11 p.m. So tonight is your only opportunity. Do take advantage of it. And then this is from the media department. They are particularly requesting that... Um, the LED and maintenance unit of the media and productions department is open for all interested persons who are skilled and will be very committed. You are skilled in anything around productions and all of that. Um, you are needed in the department. The mode of application is to submit your application by hand or by email to media at koinoniaglobal.org, media at koinoniaglobal.org, and you address it to the head of the media department. Hallelujah. The closing date, I'm told, is on the 12th of February. So you have a few days, and then that is closed. And perhaps you are not in Abuja, but you have skill and expertise, especially in the area of media. We're upgrading our media department to be world-class so that it can meet every um, the evolution that we're having as a media department. You know all the plans. We want to make sure that everything to be in place is in place. And so you may be connecting from across the world thanks to technology. Do well to write to our media department. Let them know you are available. We'll be glad to listen to what contribution you have. And you can be sure that this is a house that is ever open to learn. You may have so much that we need to learn from. We're more than glad to receive from you. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed? Next week, we're going to be fasting. Hallelujah. So we'll just fast. You can break um, for the sake of the service. Let's do 3 or 4 p.m., maybe 4 p.m. Um, children can fast till 12, and then they can break. Pregnant women and nursing mothers and all those who have health uh, situations, don't worry, we are going to fast for you in the name of Jesus Christ. You just make sure you pray. Please ensure that the children fast. Once it's 12, the children can break. All of us um, can stretch through and obtain grace from God in the name of Jesus. And please, for those of you who are coming early, please make arrangements so that at least you can have something so you are not unnecessarily stretch. We fast, but we fast with wisdom in the name of Jesus Christ. Have you been blessed tonight? Please rise up on your feet. Let me recommend that as you return back, go to Koinonia Global and listen to this message again. Extend it to as many who desire to learn and we trust God that our growth will be continuous in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much, Reverend Opara and your dear wife. Thank you so much. Pastor Fred, thank you so very much. I spotted my dear son, Pastor Ike. God bless you all the way from Asaba. Let's give him a big God bless you. I didn't even 
Um, may God bless you and it's good to see you. Everyone who has come, the Lord bless you. All our international guests, may the Lord bless you. Always honored to have you around in Jesus' name. After the grace, do hug, greet, and encourage someone in the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, thank you for tonight. You have done us well, and we give you all the praise. I declare that as we depart, you depart in glory, you depart in favor, and you depart in grace. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. Let's share the grace together in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, let it rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you and see you next week. Walking in abundance, moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost, I am favored. I am walking in abundance, moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost. I am favored. Are you walking in abundance? Moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost.